Good afternoon and welcome to Fawcett Stadium. We have a gorgeous Saturday afternoon for the 111th meeting between Camp McKinley and Massillon. The interest in the game, yeah, it's down a bit because of the records, two and seven for the Bulldogs and four and five for the Tigers. But I don't think you can ever take the luster off of a mckinley Massillon game because of the great tradition. We're not talking Stark County. We're not talking Ohio. We are talking the nation. It still may be the greatest rivalry in high school football. And these two football teams, despite not going to the playoffs, they will give it their all here this afternoon and should give us a great game. In the booth with me, at Glass, your thoughts? Well, you know, Jim, I think it's a, a, an odd game because both both teams have not performed to the levels they want to perform, and yet they're going to go out today and play, maybe play their best football of the season uh, like they do every year. And I, I kind of like McKinley's chances because uh, they have a running game, whereas I don't think Maslin has a running game. I don't think they have a, anybody that's a 1,000-yard rusher. They're dependent upon a sophomore quarterback. Uh, but if Maslin can figure out what to do with Billy Relford, then at that point, maybe they're the favorite. So it's going to be an interesting situation today as to who's going to win this because Ryan Brinson, outstanding performer for the Bulldogs, uh, if they can spring him loose on a few long runs, they're probably going to win the football game. If Maslin can get the ball to Relford and maybe he picks off a pass or two, uh, maybe they're going to win the football game. It's going to be a great game. <laughs> We'll be going down to our sideline reporter, Dan Belford, will do that right after we take these timeouts. Hi, I'm Jim Kressel, coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Football is a tradition in Stark County, and so is 1480 WHBC. So catch all the action of the Buckeyes every Saturday afternoon as the tradition of college football continues on your station for sports. 1480 WHBC. The nice thing about teamwork is that you always have others at your side. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. The achievement of a team is a result of the combined effort of each individual. Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is a progress. And working together is success. Good luck to all the Stark County teams from our team at Downtown Ford. Here in Stark County, high school football is the best in the nation. Sarda is proud to be part of this longtime tradition of excellence. At Sarda, we're committed to providing the residents of Stark County the best public transportation and we recognize the teamwork and commitment it takes to be a winner. Sarda salutes this week's teams, the Massillon Tigers and the McKinley Bulldogs. With teamwork, everybody wins. Sarda, come ride with us. Massillon, McKinley, the 111th meeting, a gorgeous day at Fawcett Stadium. Normally, a Friday nights, if it's cold and rainy, I'd want to stay in the booth and let Dan Belford be on the sideline. But boy, today, I wouldn't mind changing spots with old Daniel. It's gorgeous down there. Good afternoon, Bells. You stay right where you are, okay, because I'm not moving today. You couldn't picture it, and you couldn't paint it any better than we have right now. Let's go back to something Coach Glass was referring to, and that's the Maslin-McKinley game, usually you have the marquee backs coming into this game. Maslin usually was someone at 900 to 1,000 yards, and likewise for McKinley. That isn't the case this year for the Tigers. They have a little over 900 yards rushing as a team. In fact, Steve Himes, the quarterback who was injured a couple of weeks ago, is the leading rusher with just a little bit over 300 yards, and Tuffy Woods with 300-plus yards right behind him. They've got the sophomore quarterback. He did some good things in the air. He also made some bad judgments. That is something you would think is the Bulldogs on defense might try to take advantage of. I think Billy Relford tonight or this afternoon for the Tigers has to see as many touches as he can, and that is just not on punt returns and kickoff returns. Bring him out of the backfield, put him in a wide out position, just let him try to create and make something happen. I think Brock Himes defensively will provide the leadership. He's a leading tackler on this team. He's got to step it up emotion-wise, intensity, and show these guys they're here to take it away from the Bulldogs. For McKinley, 
Ryan Brinson has probably had the most quiet thousand yard season that you could ever imagine. But that happens when your team is two and seven. But I think today in the game, as always, he'll have the target on his back. They're going to have to look for Goodright and Kirksey to do some positive things out of that backfield, much like quarterback Schaefer. He's had a very good year, a little over 500 yards. He's only thrown three picks to six touchdowns, and he adds the, the added dimension of being able to run the ball out of the backfield. Coach Cross from McKinley said this week what he would challenge his team to do is, number one, execute, and number two, play with passion. He feels they have not done that since the uh, going back to the Jackson game that they lost by one point. It is going to be, as always, a tremendous clash of the Titans down here, guys. I look forward to it. Back up to you. All right, Dan, thank you. Look forward to checking in with you many times during the afternoon. We're going to take another break and come back with more pregame. Come on down to Downtown Ford by Canton Christian Fellowship, equipping families to reach the world by CCI, your telecommunications specialist, by Stark Area RTA, come ride with us, by State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, by Subway, the fresh and healthy choice, by Tim's Tavern, famous for fish, by Video Safari, a world of adventure for the whole family. By Mercy Medical Center, we can help you get back in the game. And by Bell Stores and Sipco, when you're on the go. And we welcome you back to Fawcett Stadium, the McKinley Massillon game. Right now, we send you down to the field with the playing of our national anthem.
the McKinley High School marching band and the playing of our national anthem. Massillon Tigers have won the uh, toss and will be taking the opening kickoff. Let's take a look at the Tiger offense and the Bulldog defense. Offensively for the Tigers, sophomore Quentin Pollock will be the starting quarterback. Tuffy Woods, Billy Welford in the, as a wide out. Tuffy Woods is a running back. Wide receiver Eric Copeland and Brad Hauser and tight end Wayne Gates all in their spread offense. Up front, we've got uh, LaShawn Edge, Vince Volpe, Kurt McKeown, Tim Dewald, an outstanding offensive and defensive football player, and Kyle Brown. Offensively, uh, I think Maslin will have to try to get the ball to Relford a lot this today because we seen him as a game breaker uh, earlier in the year. And, uh, you know, he didn't play a lot of offense uh, against Hardy. But down, down the road, He's got to get the doggone ball uh, in order to be able for them to score. McKinley's uh, defensive front uh, in their 3-4 uh, three, uh, three, alignment will be Alex Rafus at defensive end, Salahuddin Ali at nose tackle, Antoine Height, an outstanding football player at the defensive end spot, linebackers Malik Abdul-Zaire, George Fonimopoulos, Mike Kirksey, Earl Ogletree. Ogletree we've seen play very well at times from the outside linebacker spot. And, at the, and defensively, uh, and the secondary, Tyrone Gillespie, Christian Smith, Adam Studeni, and I missed the last guy. <laughs> <laughs> On the... Uh... It'd be Ryan Brinson. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back with the opening kickoff. Community sponsors of the game are Graphic Enterprises, scoring points for your business and adding color to your season. Graphic Enterprises is a proud supporter of all Stark County athletes. Here's to a great year, and remember, think Graphic Enterprises from Minolta Digital Copiers and Printers. Rick Black Photography and Digital Imaging, the official photographer for the McKinley Bulldogs. Catch all the action on our website, rickblackphoto.com. Westfield Shopping Town, Belden Village invites you to Westfield Works Wonders, an exclusive shopping night Sunday, November 16th, designed to kick off your holiday shopping and support your favorite charity. Stop by customer service for details. Alliance Imaging, Belden Village Open MRI Center, high performance in an open environment. Look for the Blue O. Hi, I'm Jim Trussell, coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Football is a tradition in Stark County, and so is 1480 WHBC. So catch all the action of the Buckeyes every Saturday afternoon as the tradition of college football continues on your station for sports, 1480 WHBC. these two football teams here on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Right now, let's take a look at what the McKinley offense will be like against that Massillon defense. Yeah, offensively, McKinley will be trying, I'm pretty sure, to run the football and keep control of the game on the ground. They will have Mike Schaefer, a quarterback, feel good right at fullback, Ryan Brinson, at a, either a halfback in the, in the wing tee or a tailback in the eye. Mark Jackson is going to be the wingback uh, or slot. Tyrone Gillespie at split end and Alex Rafus at the tight end. Uh, up front, we've got Jeff Summer, Thomas Marchi, Bill Jones, Mark Alatsis, and Joe Mascarella. Joe had an injury earlier on, but I think he's back full speed now. Uh, see what Pete Maslin signs in the stands. A lot of good showing of McKinley fans here today. A lot of red clad people running around here. Tigers defensively will start in their 3-4. We'll start D'Angelo McClendon at an end. Labrakis Burford at a nose tackle. Vince Volpe at the other defensive end. Uh, linebackers are Andy Zalaskans. Brock Himes, an outstanding linebacker you for number seven to be all over the football field. Robert Morris and Tomar Pettis at the linebacker spots. In the second day, Billy Relford and I, they're probably the most outstanding football player clad in orange and black today. Mike White, Troy Ellis, and Alex Dahlquist round out the four defensive backs. 
There's Welker Denny, number 20, not a big kid at all. Reminds me of a kid that I had a Warren Harding years and years ago uh, named Jackie Hudson, who was all over the football field, never came out. And Welford and he were very similar in stature and in skills, both outstanding players. We may have a couple of changes in that Macedon lineup that you uh, saw there. Uh, Zalas Gans could be at the anchor spot, and uh, McClendon, the defensive tackle, Burford at the nose, as Ed mentioned, Dicker Hoof at the, the other end. And I think you're going to see Paris McCall, Brock Hines, and Paul Pippich maybe start at linebackers. Yes, uh, because they, they've adjusted from their normal 3-4 three, three, look to a 4-3 because of the game. running game. Yes. And uh, Rick Sheppis, uh, uncertain he's had little injuries. And McKinley has two a lot of teams this time of the year. At, uh, Rick Sheppis yesterday said, well, let's go probably this way with the lineup. And, uh, well, you know, you usually see a lot of injuries uh, in games four and five when the uh, I alluded to this earlier in the season when teams kind of find their hitting shoes and they start hitting people with velocity. The first for three weeks, it's pretty much push and shove, and then all of a sudden everybody starts banging each other and you start to see a rash of injuries. But you don't see many injuries uh, late in the year because they've become accustomed how to defend themselves and uh, how to play at full speed and not get hurt. It's a big one. The Bulldogs have lost seven straight, and this would really help soothe the <laughs> year if they could knock off the Massillon Tigers. And, of course, Massillon coming in at four and five. They're not going to the playoffs either, and they would love to uh, get the win and look the next year with this little young club. The Tigers have won five straight. Bulldogs' last win was back in 1998. Tigers won in 99, 2000, won twice in 2001, and then they won last year over McKinley 34-17. Bellstar sit go and you're on the go to bring you this opening kickoff and again a court is apparently some rain to uh, move in later. These uh, two teams started playing each other. Oh goodness. Way back before our time coach. We're 100, not too young. 111 years ago. <laughs> 111 game but uh, about the uh, well, late 1800s they started uh, banging heads. Bulldogs uh, won several back then and then Maslin started winning their share. Zach Campbell, freshman for McKinley, will tee it up and kick it off as you see the two deep backs for the Tigers. Not sure if they're going to kick it to uh, Ralford's side or not. Ralford on the far sideline. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a bouncer trying to get it to that second wall instead of getting it deep. We are underway. Yep. You're right. Short kick. Hits it to 20, fielded at the 16-yard line with the return that is Mike White, and he is going to be taken down at the 14 as he tries to go way to the left side to find the wall. That's pretty tough to do when you field it at one sideline and try to get to the yeah, other side. They went to the other hash mark, and they had nice contain on the kick because it, uh, they hadn't had, but he got good enough speed that he would have gotten around that corner. He might have gone a long way. Robert Jeffries, our statistician this afternoon. Quentin Pollock, young sophomore quarterback, will go from the shotgun, and you'll see that most of the day. They could throw this thing 40 times. The football through his hands, and he's going to throw on it at about the one-inch line. Almost a safety. Again, he's got a sophomore quarterback. He's got a little bit of the jitters here in his first McKinley-Maslin game. I think he'll be fine by the time he gets to the middle of the quarter here, but right now, He's got butterflies running around. Fumbled that snap down on the one-inch line. He saw it in the game, and he had some impressive throws, impressive times. Well, I was, I was really impressed how much poise he had for such a young kid, but here, this is even a, a bigger game to these guys than, than a Hardy game. There's no doubt about that. Tuffy Woods back there beside him, and a high snap. They give up the run. Safety. The safety. I think the Bulldog defense knew that Tuffy Woods was going to end up with the football and well, uh, height and uh, Andrew Zaire. And spread offense when you never go under center. And, you know, you can't even run a simple dive play to get out of there. We'll be back after we take this timeout. Community sponsors of the game are Canton Baptist Temple. You can find something for everyone at Canton Baptist Temple. For more information about their ministries, visit their website at cantonbaptist.org. 
Pritchard's Roof, Chimney and Siding Company. Honesty is the best policy. Customer satisfaction is guaranteed. Call Pritchard's Roof, Chimney and Siding Company at 330-454-1478 for a free estimate. Spectrum Orthopedics, we've got you covered. Multiple locations to serve all your orthopedic and sports medicine needs. Serving all area hospitals, visit us at SpectrumOrtho.com. Dr. Laser. Dr. John Laser and his wife Robin, daughter of the late Jack W. Kreider, who is a member of the McKinley Football Hall of Fame, wish both the McKinley Bulldogs and Maslin Tigers success in their seasons. On the downtown porch scoreboard, the Bulldogs two, the Tigers nothing. Maslin has to be a little bit stunned. I'm surprised they did go under center. Oh, I am too, to go to the shotgun. Uh, and go to the takes time to get the staff. It was coming in, pushing those two a little bit, and at that point, hand the ball off against a defense that you know is going to be blitzing and coming after you down there. Like, that's just like automatically it's going to be a safety. Back shame for a fine kicker for the Tigers has a tee at the 20. The kickoff being brought to you by Bell Store Sitco, and you're on the go. So the Bulldogs. Get the break early, lead 2-0. Tigers now will have to kick it from their own 20. Turn possession over to the Bulldogs. Fielded at the 15-yard line by Ryan Brinson. Brinson, 30, 40, Brinson, 45. Brinson. Still on his feet. What a run, 49-yard line. If he isn't fired up, carries four guys, four yards. Now the home side here. Full of uh, red and black. There's a replay of the uh, safety that uh, you see the snap from center is a little high. He's got to hand the football off, and here comes the Bulldogs on the blitz right now, making the hit in the end zone. Well, the Kimley at their 49 yard line. They lead 2 0 with 10.59 to go in the opening period. Glad you're with us on this gorgeous Saturday, week 10 of the high school football season. Brinson goes in motion, gets the hand off. Brinson spins 50 into the Tiger territory with a 49 yard line before he is wide down. Can we start it out and then balance line left and ran the wing T sweep. DCI proudly continue their tradition of recognizing the player of the game. The player of the game is a flash and a letter of recognition. CCI strongly supporting the accomplishments of interscholastic sports programs. CCI, the star of communication, recognizing the stars of the game this afternoon. And uh, our acknowledgement of thank you to CCI, great sponsor. Second down, eight, five front for the Tigers. They give it to Mark Jackson on the end around, and he has stopped for a loss of two or three yards. Tigers spelled that one out. Brock Hines, who just had a great year, along with the uh, Zalas Cons, made the tackle. Oh, McKinley trying to run the jet sweep here. The motion by uh, Jackson, a handoff. They pull the guard, uh, Alatsis, out to lead him. But the Tigers are there with a lot of uh, bodies, a lot of white shirts at the point of attack. They will now fake that play and probably run uh, the fullback trap up the middle. Uh, not maybe this play, but down the road. Loss of three, second down and 11. Shape of the quarterback, only a junior, but a veteran played last year. They give it to Brinson, and Brinson is close high for time. Ball came loose, but it's dead. But McKinley loses back to the 44-yard line. Austin has an injured player on the field, on right on the 50-yard line. So the officials take a timeout. I think he fumbled the snap from center, but yep. he dropped it and picked it up. That play was botched right from the beginning, trying to run a little wing back counter up the pipe. We'll be back there. after we take this time out. The nice thing about teamwork is that you always have others at your side. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. The achievement of a team is a result of the combined effort of each individual. Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is a progress. And working together is success. Good luck to all the Star County teams from our team at Downtown Ford. Downtown Ford scoreboard 2-0. The injured Massillon player, one of their fine.
Pepperdine juniors, 5'11", 273. Defensive tackle, D'Angelo McClendon, and they are tending with him on the field there at the 50-yard line. You can see Coach Rick Sheppa standing there uh, watching with if concern. he has to go out, we're probably going to see Vince Volpe, a 6'2", 270-pound senior, come in. Hey, viewers, at the end of the first half of our game, we'll be bringing you the Sarda Touchdown Spotlight, Stark Area RTA. Come ride with us. Now, the good thing you see there is D'Angelo is, well, you can't see it. We're looking at it. You can see uh, D'Angelo walking off the field to the uh, far side. Now, I would, if I had to guess, he'll be back. He's walking pretty well, putting weight on it. I would bet he gets back in action. Now, the Bulldogs looking at fourth down. They need 15. They're at the 44-yard line, and they are going to kick the football away. Potento back as the punter. Tigers with seven up on the front line. And the kick's away. Kicking away from the receivers and out of bounds on purpose. Now, Ralford was the deep back back there. We'll be back after we take this timeout. Here in Stark County, high school football is the best in the nation. Sarda is proud to be part of this longtime tradition of excellence. At Sarda, we're committed to providing the residents of Stark County the best public transportation, and we recognize the teamwork and commitment it takes to be a winner. Sarda salutes this week's teams, the Massillon Tigers and the McKinley Bulldogs. With teamwork, everybody wins. Sarda, come ride with us. Downtown Ford scoreboard, 2 0. Bulldogs on top. 26 yard punt. Robert Jeffries, our statistician today. 2 0. McKinley leads. Tigers now are going under center. And they're going to give it off to Tuffy Woods. And Antoine Height says, You're not going anywhere on this play. Came off the block and made the hit in the backfield. Now, if they're going to go under center out here, why didn't they go under center in the end zone? I don't understand that. It's a replay. You see the motion man there shuffling, and it's just an off tackle play, a stretch play to the left side. Height comes off of the reach block and makes the hit in the backfield. Loss of one. Ball is back to the 29-yard line. Now they are going to go shotgun with uh, Quentin Pollock. He is 6'2", He's got an arm. They give it off to Woods, and Antoine Hyde again says hello. Got some help there from number 34, linebacker for the Bulldogs, Mike Kirksey. McKinley in there, 3-4. Didn't look to be stunning that time, just playing it straight. The snap to the quarterback and a give to Woods up the pipe, and he's met with a sandwich right there between uh, Height and Fonomopoulos. Minus 14 yards, the Tigers in this game so far with their offense. They're looking at third down. Pollock to throw through a little bit behind Relford at the first down marker at the 40 yard line. And it's going to be fourth down coming up for the Tigers. Fourth and 10. 7.50 to go in this opening period. The McKinley Bulldogs lead it by a score of 2 0 on a safety if you just joined us. Bulldogs brought a lot of pressure off the edge that time with the two outside linebackers. And at that point, uh, Pollock unloaded it early to Relford, and it was. Uh, before he was ready. Max Schaefer standing at his 16-yard line, and we've got a flag by the line judge at the 30. Maslin pointing at McKinley. So it could end up to be fourth and five. Offside on the Bulldogs. Something they didn't want to happen and something that shouldn't happen. Let's get out of the sidelines to Dan Belford. Hey, thanks, guys. On the McKinley sideline right now, we'll be going over the Tiger sideline here in a little bit, but hearing good chatter from over here. Uh, these kids are, are passionate today and probably higher than a kite than they've been in, in several, several weeks. But the coaches are saying, stay focused. We're not into our blocking schemes yet. Defensively, we've got to keep doing the positive things we did the first couple times they've had the ball. And it, again, it comes down to execution, intensity, and wanting this football game. Back up to you. Now the Bulldogs were drawn offside, and this could give Massillon a first down. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, cadence. They got him to jump into the neutral zone on the cadence two times in a row which picks up a first down. So back-to-back -back five yard offside penalties and the Tigers keep it alive at their 40 yard line. 
Well, emotion lasts for about two minutes, I think, of a football game. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it'll carry you halfway through the first quarter, and then after that, it's who's got the best football player. <laughs> emotion kind of dwindles. A little bit of emotional factor in the third quarter also, but not that much. It disappears even faster. <laughs> now the Tigers going to put a trips package to the bottom of your screen and they'll stay with their shotgun with Pollock. Bulldogs forefront. Pollock gives off to Tuffy Woods. Finds a little crease this time about the 44-yard line where he was hit and stopped by Christian Smith, quarterback of the Dogs. Again, it's just a handoff and they Pulling the uh, right guard around, blocking uh, Frontomopoulos, the linebacker. Smith steps up in from the outside defensive back spot and makes a tackle. But it's a gain of uh, four or five yards. Yeah, it's just shy of the 45. They keep their trips to the bottom. Pollock's going to roll right. Or check, that's Steve Hines. Hines is in a quarterback, and he's going to run it up near the 50. Got hit and driven back. Stu Denny was there along with Ogletree, so Himes with the carry. Gain of four and a half. Hi. Himes in a quarterback, took Pollock out, and at that point they're running a sweep. He looks like he's gonna throw, but this is a run all the way. He's keeping the ball around the corner. With Pollock's in there, he's not gonna run it. Prince had also helping out. Well, you know, Himes, their leading rusher coming in, 321 yards. Himes has thrown for over 1,200 yards. Steve Himes was the man that was carrying this football team until he got hurt. Of course, then they ran into those state right teams there four weeks in a row. He's, uh, at this point, uh, a full-time quarterback. Third down and short. We hear whistles and delay a game penalty. That hurts. Third down and inches, and now you're third and five and a half. Reminder, if you don't have your static sticker from Bell Store Sitco, go get one. They're available any Bell Store Sitco in Stark County. Display yours. You might win $100 for your school's academic programs and the $25 Bell Store Sitco cash card just for you. If you want some rules, ask at your nearest Bell Store Sitco. Trips package down to the left, the top of your screen, and Himes at quarterback going to roll. Pressure coming backside. Will throw. It is caught. McKinley territory about the 44. And with the reception, that is Darian Hendricks, junior wideout. Masson went unbalanced with their offensive line that time. They've only got two guys to the right of the center, neither of whom are eligible for a pass. They unbalanced trips left, and at that point, Himes rolls out into that unbalanced side and throws a perfect outcut into the boundary. Well, two first downs now for the Tigers, one by penalty, one by pass. They move the ball to the McKinley 45-yard line. Himes will stay quarterback, gives off to Tuffy Woods. Got a block, turns it outside, and Christian Smith again coming up to make the tackle after a gain of four yards to the Bulldog 41. Offense seems to have settled down since they've put Himes in at the quarterback spot. We've got the off tackle play here and Woods just bounces it to the outside. Smith has to come up from his corner position and make the tackle after a four yard gain. Maslin Tiger started this at their 30 yard line got help they were looking at third and ten and McKinley had back-to-back -back offsides gave the Tigers a first down at their 40 and now about four or five snaps later they moved it down just shy of McKinley 40-yard line. Himes under center this time. Woods the lone setback and gets the carry to about the 37-yard line. Trying to take advantage of the 3-4 uh, defense where Ogletree as the outside linebacker is really the end in this set. Uh, if it were a five-man front and Ogletree coming off the corner trying to run underneath him with a dive. Let's get down to Dan Belford. Daniel. Hey, thanks, guys. On the Tiger sideline, D'Angelo McClendon uh, looked like an ankle when he came off, but they have heavily iced his knee, his uh, left knee, I believe. Talk to him for a second. He's in some pain. They're in no hurry to get him back in. He's just going to evaluate it as the first half goes. When he feels he's ready to go, they'll let us know. Back up to you. All right, Daniel, thank you much. Vassalo wants a timeout here. That'll stop the clock with 4.58 to go. Kinley lined up in man-to-man -man with a free safety, and obviously the play they had called wasn't very good against that defense. 
So they called timeout. Ball is at the 37-yard line. It is third down and two coming up for the Tigers. And if you just joined us, Bulldogs are on top by a score of 2-0. Very first possession for the Tigers. They started the football at their 14-yard line in the first snap. A little bit high and off the hands of Pollock. Back to the one-inch line. The very next play, Tuffy Woods got tackled in the end zone. That came with 11.09 to go in that uh, first quarter here that we're still in. We've got the state championships coming up, and you can get your seat for the 2003 Ohio High School State Football title games. Books of tickets are on sale now through November 17th. Call the Camp Stark County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Order your tickets, 330-458-2084. Relford in motion. Himes looking over the middle and got his tight end, Gates. First down at the 27. Boy, Gates had some nice catches in the Harding game, and he was open there over the middle, and we got uh, first was, down at the 26. That was a nice choice by Himes that time. He was gone to try to hit the motion man and McKinley in man to man went right across with him and then Gates crossed came into the middle and made the catch no flag there right where the tackle was made got the official huddling out here on the tw on the uh, 28 yard line didn't see any face mask or anything no I didn't either flag is down at the 25 ball is just across the uh, 27 Gates is an outstanding receiver from the tight end spot Call uh, personal foul. Personal foul against the Tiger. Uh oh. Offsetting. Offsetting penalties. So it will be first down all over again, right? No. Yeah, it'll be first yeah, down coming first up. First down coming up. Nothing happened there. What was maybe sent a mile up there. Brian Cross his first year and McKinley desperately wanting a win here. Just basically unsportsmanlike on both teams, guys. What happened was uh, McKinley initiated, Tigers retaliated. That's why you had two of them. Well, Himes tried to hit uh, Gates down about the 15-yard line. Incomplete pass. There's a fake to Woods going to the uh, defensive left, throwing the ball in, trying to hit Gates. Incomplete. So we have 429 left in the first quarter. We've got trips to the left side. And it is second down 10. Himes the throw over the middle and a little bit behind his receiver at the 15 yard line. That was Brad Hauser. Mauser hooked it up on the inside and at the uh, a well-thrown ball there would have got him, but instead, uh, ball was thrown behind him. Four twenty to go in the first. Still two nothing Bulldogs, and it's now third down and ten. Tight cluster at the top of your screen of three receivers. And this is Himes. Has time now. Pressure's coming. He's gonna run. And knocked off his feet at the 22-yard line. Christian Smith up to take the uh, ball carrier Hines down. It's going to be fourth down coming up with 4.05 and the clock moving here in the opening period. That's where Himes is really dangerous when he takes off and runs on that quarterback draw. That's not a designed draw. Kind of get a lot of pressure on him here. He's looking, doesn't like what he sees, slips one tackle in the backfield, and it pops up the middle where Christian Smith finally takes his feet out from under him at the 22-yard line. It's fourth down. About six for the Tigers at the Bulldog 22-yard line. McKinley on top, 2-0. Shotgun for Himes and a timeout too being much called. Time. Oh, too much time being called. Rick Sheffler started to walk out of the field at the top of your picture there. Well, you can't see Rick, but he started to walk out. I thought he was going to call timeout. Well, I think he knew what the call was going to be, and at that point he walked out onto the sideline because he's angry that they didn't get the playoff. Rick Sheffis walking back to the uh, sideline. Fourth, Fourth down, down, about 11. 
Shotgun for Himes. Two receivers to the bottom, one to the top. Himes with time, throws, and it is incomplete at the five-yard line. Flag is down. Pass was intended for Copeland. The flag is not on an interference call. Where's the flag? It's at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we'll watch and see what the referee signals here. Well, if this is against the Tigers, uh, McKinley, probably McKinley will turn it down. Yes, they turned the penalty down. They will take over the football. But ineligible receiver downfield, and McKinley says we'll take the football. Ball is going to be at the Bulldog 27-yard line with 3.25 left to go in the opening period. McKinley still on top by a score of 2-0. They scored within the first minute of the play of safety. Mike Schaefer, the 6'1", 192-pound junior, heading back into the Bulldog huddle. Of a wing to the uh, top, slot to the bottom, five front defensively for the Tigers. And Schaefer's going to give it to Jackson coming back. And Jackson stretches it out to about the 29-yard line. He'll get a couple. That's about it. A little quick wing back counter up the middle. Well, we were telling you all year about movies. That, uh, you can tune in Monday morning to Fred and Pam and mention it that you heard it during the game. It's the Play It Again with Video Safari movie. It uh, is breaking away today, breaking away. Another one I don't think I've seen. But uh, you'd be the first caller Monday morning with the correct answer, and you win a free movie rental from your friends at Video Safari. 2.47 left to go. It is now second down and eight. We're in the opening period here on a gorgeous day at Boston Stadium. This is the pitch to that's good right, I believe. Good right from the fullback spot. And gone nowhere. I think the Tiger defense pretty strong. Kinley's going to have to do some things in order to move the football because uh, I think, as I said in the pregame, that Maslin has a bit of an edge defensively. I, I, just my feeling was that McKinley would be able to move the ball on the ground a little bit, but they surely haven't shown it yet. Robert Jeffries, the staff guy, just said minus three on the ground for McKinley so far in this opening period. Their defense has given them a 2-0 lead over the Tigers. Here comes Baselin. It's picked up, and Schaefer has time. Will throw it deep, and we got a flag down. Down at the 40-yard line. It was intended for Mark Jackson, and the coverage there by Mike White. This is that throwback from the waggle pass. They fake the fullback up the middle. Brinson on the sweep to the left. And the quarterback then rolls right. Jackson is running a corner route on the backside. He broke in and back out. You can see the de defensive interference as he tries to get to the football and is knocked off, to, off his stride by the defensive back. That was Mike White on the coverage. It's going to be at the 44-yard line. A first down by penalty. For McKinley. That is their first first down of the game. Defense have dominated so far. We're down to 153 to go in the opening period. Got the fullback in behind Schaefer, and the handoff is to the fullback in good right. Again, can find no running room. Stopped at the line of scrimmage, and a flag is down on the far side there at the line of scrimmage. McKinley, I think, is in motion. The illegal procedure penalty, I think, coming up here. Yep. That was a poorly executed play because the fake was supposed to be to Brinson coming across in motion. The snap was way late. He was well beyond the quarterback. There was no effective fake at all to the motion man. And what they wanted to do was fake the ball to Brinson on the jet sweep and then give to Goodright running up the middle. But that really didn't occur because Brinson was clear out by the tight end by the time the ball was snapped. Still 151 to go. First down, 15, and the handoff to Goodright, and Brock Himes nailed him at the 40-yard line. He'll get about a yard. That time they ran the same play with, uh, but out of an unbalanced line, and still tried to run the fullback trap. It's going to be second down and 14. 
too many penalties. Oh, a lot of the game. three for 25 against the Tigers, three for 15 against the Bulldogs. Second down, 14. Ball at the McKinley 40. Bulldogs in an unbalanced set to the right again. Brinson in motion, and this is run all the way by Schaefer. See how much speed he got to get the corner. Go back to 44 and ran out of bounds. Over to put a shoulder into him was Alex Dahlquist. Picked Dahlquist a strong safety. Four yards, naked bootleg. Fake right here to the fullback on the trap. Quarterback keeping the ball around the left side on a naked bootleg. Knocked out of bounds by Dahlquist. Third down, 10. And the Bulldogs put a trip package to the right. Top of your screen. Tight end left. Schaefer throws it almost backwards to Brentson and Billy Relford knows what's coming and Relford nails Brentson back at the 41 yard uh, line. Tiger defense and particularly Relford read that really well with the bubble screen. And at that point, uh, Gillespie was supposed to block Relford and Relford shot right across his face, came hard to the inside and made the tackle. So McKinley really minus yardage for their offense. And yet they lead 2 nothing, but they have to kick the football away. Potento standing back at his 27. McKinley only has 10 people on the punt team. They need another guy out there. Ken McKinley takes a timeout. So the Bulldogs first timeout of the game. They lead it by a score of 2-0. I'm not sure what the attendance might be today. Could be the one of the smaller crowds that they've had. They're maybe talking about 15,000 for the uh, ball game. This marks just the second time since, oh goodness, back in 1913 in the series when the game was moved to become the uh, final game of the season that both McKinley and Mastelin uh, are going into the game with losing records on the other time. Uh, they had losing records. 1931, Mastelin was 2-6 and 2. McKinley was 2-8. and Mastelin won 20-6. to and That next year, Jimmy Aiken and Paul Brown took over in both programs. And uh, then McKinley's 2-7 and seven this year. And the last time McKinley entered the game 2-7, 1951, Mastelin was 9-1 and one and beat the Bulldogs 40-8. to eight. Potento ready to kick it away now. We get back to action. No pressure. Good punt. Again, yeah. they're trying to keep it away yep. from the return man. Relford. That distance and angled it out of bounds at the same time. Excellent. Nice job. Yep. Now all the way down to the maximum 24 yard line. So with 25 seconds to go in the opening period, the Tigers back to their offense. They trail the Bulldogs by a score of two to nothing. 35 yard punt, no return. And Massillon now, I think they might be in a plus yardy situation as they go back to offense. They had been minus. Pollock back at quarterback. In the shotgun. He's going to throw it left side to the 29 of the 30 yard line. They keep him in bounds. The reception made by Billy Relford. And that likely could be the final play of the first quarter. Direct snap to Pollock. Maybe he's got the butterflies out a little bit now. He did, throws the ball like I've seen him throw it. Completes completes the ball to Relford. Nothing, nothing. Or that check that. Two nothing. McKinley over Massillon. Two nothing. Bulldogs lead on the downtown board scoreboard. Hey, it's time now for the Mercy Medical Center Stark County football trivia question. And the question, the largest crowd ever officially recorded to watch a mckinley Massillon game was roughly, there's your three choices. You pick one of them. Nobody likes sitting out on the sidelines, so if you've got a sports-related injury or medical issue, get to the Mercy Sports Medicine Center, located at the corner of Whipple and Dressler in North Canton, and at Fulton Road next to Jackson High School. They provide full treatment and rehabilitation for any type of sports injury for any age of athlete or weekend warrior. Make an appointment right now with Dr. James Goff, medical director. Call 330-471-5930. That's 471 And let Mercy Sports Medicine get you back in the game. 
The answer to this afternoon's Mercy Medical Center Stark County football trivia question is going to be 32,000. It was the 101st meeting the year 1994 in the playoffs at the Akron Rubber Bowl. The official paid attendance was the 32,219. Well, we start the second quarter on this Saturday afternoon. Second down for the Tigers, trailing 2 0. Pollock has a lot of time, is going to throw a deep over, throws a man who was wide open, Billy Ralford. Ralford had got it behind the linebacker or the defensive person, uh, Abdul Zaire. Well, they were in man to man across the board, going to blitz that time, Jim. And they, Ralford broke free down the left sideline, but they overthrew. Third down now. Kinley back in zone coverage now. They didn't like that. Pollock, left side throws incomplete. Again, he threw a little bit too far ahead of his receiver, Copeland, coming across at the 35. Sophomore has, Pollock has just not been able to relax and deliver the football. We saw him do an excellent job against the uh, Warren Harding Raiders, but he's not doing uh, a very good job in this first quarter. He needs to relax, just let it flow. This will be the Tigers' first punt. 11.53 to go in the second quarter. Pollock seems to be guiding the football instead of throwing it. Schaefer standing back at his 16-yard line. Good snap. Kicks away. Driving punt at the 31-yard line. Christian Smith, 35, 40. Smith, 45 with a 48-yard line. We're back after we take this timeout. Hi, Doug Hamilton for CCI. Communication is important on the football field. The same goes for business. CCI, the area's leading communication equipment provider, has the answer. Whether it's Toshiba's digital IP-enabled phone system or Kenwood's reliable two-way radio equipment, call CCI for your company's communication needs. In Canton at 497-7715 or Akron at 896-3905. Downtown Ford scoreboard is McKinley 2 and Maxillin nothing, 11.42, first half. Starting to get a little bit gray up top. Yeah, the rain's coming, I think. Let's hope it holds off to the five or six this afternoon. Bulldogs with, I think, their best field position offensively. They've got an opportunity to here to do something. They're at their 48-yard line. Fullback in behind uh, Schaefer and the fullback with the ball. But good right again. Just can't find much running room. That's, that's his a third gain of carry. five. I'll tell you what, that's not too bad. That's a good uh, that's a good first down play. Ran that fullback isolation play into the two-man blocking side. They lead the half back up on the linebacker. They X the guard. They pull the right guard, left guard, right guard, and he traps the end and lead the half back through on the linebacker. Well, from the 48 of McKinley to the 48 of Massillon. Second down and six. In good right. In behind uh, Schaefer. And again, good right. Gets the carry. Ralph comes off the corner. Or check that it's White hits him. And then a couple other Tigers arrive at the Massillon 44 yard line. Two classic wing T plays there. That time they ran the fullback on the belly off tackle with a right guard pulls and traps the end. There is football. Uh, Walsh will play Geneva here at 6.30 today. Yeah, I understand. It's going to be the second game here today. They're going to oh. play in a downpour. In fact, if you got, that makes them feel good. Thanks. But if you've got a ticket to this game, you can use that ticket stub and come in free to the Walsh-Geneva game. Now that keeps them from having to clean out the stands. <laughs> Third down. And yard, yard and a half. Good ride again. He breaks it through. 40, 35, 30. And down to the Tiger. 28, maybe the 27-yard line. Same play they ran on first down. They X the, they pulled the uh, right guard and uh, brought the right tackle down and blocked. And led to that time with no lead back, just led the fullback through on a, uh, on a. Uh, you see the right tackle Mascarella blocking down, the right guard pulling. Good right popping up through the X block, cross block. Good, Good yardage into the 29. Injury and coming out of the game is going to be number 55, That's Bill center. Jones. That's their center. That's not good. He cannot put any weight on that left leg. 
80, 90 percent of the time when you exchange the center or quarterback in a T formation offense, you're going to have a fumble. Well, Brian Arena is his backup, six foot two, eighty-seven, and a junior. Jones also a junior. One of the advantages that uh, you have when you bring your quarterback over, like Brian Cross does, to give him the next play, is he can warn him to make sure he rides that center a little extra this time. Arena is in there. He was in a couple, three games ago when James Jones was injured. Oh, we got motion. Yep, flags are flying. And they still run the play down to the 29, but uh, three flags on the. Uh, Can't field. have two backs in motion at the same time. They both. We used to get that when I ran, so a lot of motion like that. We'd tell them both to sit down and get in a stance right now if they saw each other. <laughs> they met at the bat back there. Whoops. Here's what Theo Goodrice has been doing, and most of that on that last carry, got 15 yards on that carry. This is going to back the Bulldogs up five yards. Motion penalty. 9.53 first half, 2 nothing. McKinley on top. 111th meeting. McKinley's dominating line, uh, time of possession here with their running game. They, they took four or five minutes off the clock early on, even though they didn't move it very much. And here they've taken four or five minutes off the clock. They're controlling a the football game with a running game. Now it's first down and 15 McKinley at the Tiger 39 yard line. Jackson comes in motion. Schaefer fakes, fires, got his tight end. Rafus 20, 15 down to the 14 yard line. Goes Rafus before he's brought down by Mike White. Rafus a load at 6'3, 234 in the senior. He lined up at the left side at the tight end spot. He crossed over. This is the waggle pass. They take it. Snap from center here pretty soon. No, no waggle pass. This is just a play action fake to the fullback, drop back, and a court, the tight end is crossing from the left to the right side, comes open. It's a flood cut over here. There's three receivers on the right. Now McKinley at the Tiger 14-yard line. And again, it's good right. He'll hammer into about the 11-yard line. Again, running the belly play to the fullback, off tackle, pulled the right guard, collapses to trap. Mike awesome. White, strong side corner, hit him. Mascarella and Rafus blocking down to the inside. Hey, every game with a big catch. We'll be picking tonight's catch of the day or this afternoon. Just sponsored by Tim's Tavern. We'll do that at the end of the broadcast. Tim's Tavern, famous for fish. McKinley up 2 nothing, and they're at the Tiger 12-yard line. Jackson in motion, gets the handoff, and what a nice defensive play by the Tigers. The ball comes loose, but I think the play was dead. He was dead, yeah, he was down. But, uh, Vince Volpe, 6'2", 270, got a hold of the backside jersey there of uh, Mark Jackson. In, he came in to replace uh, D'Angelo McClendon, who sprained his knee earlier. Came off the bench. He's not a little fella at 6'2", uh, 270. It's at the 12 yard line. Daniel, you find anything out about Jones, the center? Jones is he is back, back in. in there snapping the ball, guys. He's doing he just is. fine. Okay, he is back in. And whistles. Too much time. That hurts. Both teams have had too much time penalties today. Rick Sheppis on the sideline. Tigers four and five. Tough little schedule this year. Young team. But don't matter if you come in here 0-9 or 9-0 as far as the rivalry goes. You want to beat. Shotgun. The opponent in this last game. Schaefer. Whoa! Oh, wow! Picked off. Gillespie coming across the middle. And it's like... Ladrakis Burford ran right into the football. Oh, that was great coverage. He, they, they, he smelled that slip screen out right now. He came off the line of scrimmage and sprinted to his right and almost picked it off. My goodness, there wasn't anybody between him and the goal line. Nice play by the defensive tackle, Ladrakis Burford.
We are going to take a timeout, and we'll be back. At Canton Christian Fellowship, it's our desire to provide the environment where you and your family will experience the goodness of God and His abounding love toward you. If you don't have a home church, we invite you and your family to worship with us. We're reaching the next generation by equipping our youth and children to reach their generations and prepare for the future. Canton Christian Fellowship, a church to call home. We can't hear you. On the downtown Ford scoreboard, Bulldogs 2 and Massillon nothing. 7.45 left in the first half. First downs, it's three for McKinley. One by run, one by pass, one by penalty. Three first downs for the Tiger. Two by pass, one by penalty. Best offensive performance so far. Good right to fullback. Six carries, 27 yards. Japers thrown for 17 yards. That's uh, for McKinley as they get ready to go here on the fourth down. Fourth down, they need about 14. Schaefer under center. They got to get inside the uh, five to about the four, and Schaefer's going to look to put it upstairs. Throws, Rafe is tied in. The first and goal at the two-yard line. The nicely designed football play. They brought the flanker in motion, made a play action fake to the right side. I'll uh, change the catch. It was Antoine and Height. Threw back to the tight end who delayed, went out to the flat and up the sideline. He's wide open at about the two. So that was Antoine Height, 84. Don Rafus, 81. Stacked eye this time. At the Tiger 2, first and goal. Given to Brinson. Push and shove to the goal line. He got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, McKinley. Enjoy reigns supreme on the McKinley sideline. That comes with 7-11 left to go in the first half. And the Bulldogs now jump up by a score of 8-0. Good effort by Brinson taking four or five extra steps after it got hit. That Campbell to try the point after. It is up and it is good. So with 7 11 to go in the first half here, it's nine McKinley, nothing Massel, and we're back after we take this timeout. Whether you're on a straightaway or a twisted road. Kumo's always ready for the unexpected. Ultra high performance, passenger and truck tires. World class quality and value. Kumo, way to go. On the downtown Ford scoreboard, the McKinley Bulldogs nine, the Mastelin Tigers nothing. Brinson, a two yard run with 7 left to go. That was 11 plays, 53 yards for McKinley. Robert Jeffries, our statistician today, informing me of that. And there is the scoring drive. The Bulldogs just shoving it into the end zone to take a 9 nothing lead. Game's playing out pretty much like I thought it would. If McKinley could move the ball on the ground, it could, could control the time off the clock. Well, and he had a couple of key passes to his tight end. Yeah. Also, one to Rafus and one to Height there. Well, they've, they've used the passing game effectively, but basically they've also been able to run the football a little bit. Well, this is Robinson, a young sophomore. Right now, they've got extreme momentum. And the return is to the 27-yard line with the Massillon Tigers will go first down and 10. They'll try to get their offense in gear. 7.04 left in the half. What the dogs don't want to do here is make a big mistake and give up a cheap touchdown. They've got to try to keep gains to a minimum. 
Now, Pollock stays in at quarterback for the Tigers. The young sophomore standing in a shotgun formation back at his 21-yard line. Kenley pretty much in a nickel defense here. Just with the three-man rush, blitz in the linebacker, handed off to Tuffy. Woods upended at the 29. Abdul Zaire made the uh, tackle. At five, McKinley had five defensive backs on the field. Still managed to stop the draw play here. This is that counter-isolation play that Massam runs where they lead the other back up in the hole to block. And Woods fakes left and it comes back right. A gain of two for Tuff. He gives him 13 yards, seven carries. They've been uh, defending him very well today. Pollock under center. McKinley blitzing. They pick it up. Screen pass out. It is caught at the 30-yard line. The reception by Ramon Kelly. And well the executed play, except nobody blocked anybody after he caught the screen pass. It's going to be about the 30. McKinley coming upfield to chase the quarterback. Watch here on a replay. They got a strong rush. They got a blitz coming. Screen the ball in behind. But nobody gets a block. Well, they've called a timeout to bring the chains on. It's at the 37, near the 37. And you can take a look at it with us and see they're six, eight inches short. It'll be third down, I believe, coming up. 6-11 left in the first half. Again, the Tigers with three first downs today. Two on the, or two by pass, one by penalty. Nothing on the ground yet. So third down, inches for Mastelin. They're going to line it up in the eye and put Paulink under center. Quarterback sneak. He's got the first down to the 38-yard line. You know what I just saw, Jim, was a lot of lightning over here to the northwest. You're full of good news, aren't you? This could be a delayed game if we if it comes in here. It's a big zap up there. You got a big zap beside me, too. So what the heck? <laughs> yeah, it is getting dark over there. As you see Pauly come back to the masculine sideline. 9-0, McKinley leading it here with 5.52 left to go in the half. McKinley and Massillon, the marching bands at halftime. They always give us a nice show. Pressure again. They set the screen up. It's dropped. Last screen was he got this well, one. Well-formed screen. Just dropped the football. That was Tuffy Woods. Last time they completed it. Yeah. Nobody blocked anybody. This time they dropped the ball. Elmer Ramon Kelly got the first screen, and this one uh, Tuffy Woods tried to pull it. It's open. All he's got to do is start running again. Gets caught from behind there, but wouldn't have been, I don't think, if uh, he'd have caught the football. Second down, 10, shotgun. Kinley keeps showing and faking stunts. Here they come with a five-man rush, and Pollock delivers the ball. Brinson picked it off at the 46-yard line. Ryan Brinson with the interception at the Bulldog 46, the return in the Massillon territory to the Tiger 49. McKinley sitting out there with two safeties, tried to run a curl route or a quick post, one or the other, to the split end. Brinson, number three, up the left, upper left corner of your screen, breaks on the ball right where the quarterback was looking, picks it off. A lot of black shirts around that football. Pauling last week in the Harding game threw, uh, I think, three touchdowns and five interceptions. 5.27 to go. And the Bulldogs at the Tiger 49, leading at 9 0. Schaefer to Brinson. Brinson 45 He's 40. Brinson. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown, McKinley. 49 yards, Ryan Brinson. a 90 degree cut on a cutback pops it up the middle tigers in man to man up close to the line of scrimmage no safety 40 what 48 yards 49 49 yard run potato to hold zach campbell to try the point after 
And they flag him. It's going to be on McKinley. I don't know what the official's calling here. 519 left to go in the first half. It is 15 nothing. Uh, the holder took his gl receiver glove off in order to hold the ball and placed it on the ground. The official ruled it was illegal equipment of some kind on the ground. Now he's got it under his knee, and I guess that's all right. Just a longer extra point, and Campbell nails it through the uprights. So we've got 519 left to go in the first half. 16 McKinley, nothing Vaseline. Back after this timeout. Well played. Service and selection. Come on down to downtown for games or gimmicks and satisfaction. Come on down to downtown for for bright service and selection. Come on down to downtown for Come on down to downtown for So come on down and see what All Star County's singing about. Come on down to downtown Fort. On the downtown Fort scoreboard, it's McKinley 16, Massillon nothing. We turn to our stat guy, Robert Jeffries, and uh, one play, 49 yards. And Brinson has scored twice today, once on a two-yard run, once on a 49-yard run. There's your scoring drive. Bell Store Sitco to bring you this kickoff. As Zach Campbell has it teed up at the 40 yard line. There's our little yellow beep beep bug. First half with all McKinley. Again, McKinley popping it up, trying not to kick it deep. Ralford is a 15. And up to about the 27 yard line where the open Donovan field tackle Rubin made by Donovan Rubin. Take a look at the Tiger sideline and the Tiger fans. Massillon needs a score to get some momentum back. They're down now 16 0. A safety and a two touchdowns by the Bulldogs. As dark clouds start to roll in over Boston a bit. And fumble on the handoff. The Bulldogs, I think, have it. And Massillon. Nope, Himes come up with it. The Kinley players were showing that uh, they had the football. Quarterback took the direct snap from center, and he's supposed to stick it straight out. The running back run over the ball. They couldn't act like a running back didn't didn't know what to do with it there. And all of a sudden, it came out, and Himes got back on it. Rick Sheppard sweating his Tigers to get it cranking here. Second down, Himes will throw. Incomplete, tipped up, and almost Brinson. picked up. Brinson oh, again. Almost another pick. Did the same thing. Try to run that quick post. Brinson broke in front of it from his safety spot. Knocked it away. Well, upstairs now, the Tiger quarterbacks have put it up 13 times. Falling seven attempts has the one pick. Himes has put it up six times. And Massillo needs 11 yards to keep the football here. Himes will stay with a shotgun and a penalty flag, though, stops the uh, play here. Line judge, side judge has tossed it. So they have, what, uh, 31 yards in the air. Ball is moved back to about the 21 yard line. And it will be third down and 16 now for Massillon. They'll go from the shotgun. Himes with time. Throws deep. Picked off. 
at the 50-yard line. The interception by Bradley Jones. Bradley Jones tried to, Tigers tried to hit a long one down the left sideline, overthrew it. Jones was just sitting there in zone coverage and picked it off. Uh, Bulldogs have played a real good zone coverage today. Not too good in the man-to-man, -to -man, but boy, in the zone, they're right there. Those safeties are breaking on the football. Case of Maslow's trying maybe to get too much on one throw. They've been throwing 15, 25 yards downfield. First down and 10. Hand off Brinson. Brinson 35. 33 yard line, Ryan Brinson. Wing T sweep that time, pulled both guards. Let Brinson off tackle. You can see the McKinley Bulldogs playing with a lot more confidence right now. We have three minutes and 51 seconds left to go in the first half. Bulldogs at the Tiger 33-yard line. They lead it 16-0 here. McKinley led after one, 2-0. Two and they scored two touchdowns here in the second quarter. Brinson on a two-yard run. Brinson on a 49-yard run. There's Brian Cross. Has to be feeling pretty good, but of course, a lot of football to be played yeah, yet. A lot, of game, a, lot of, a lot of play left to go. McKinley's been hurt this year by some big plays. Hand off Mark Jackson and right into the arms of Robert Morris, a young sophomore for the Tigers. That's about the third time they've run that jet sweep, and they haven't been successful with it yet. It's going to be third down coming up for McKinley, third and 05. Schaefer's hit uh, actually three passes out of four today. One was for minus three yards. See if he goes upstairs now. And Brinson in motion. And this is going to be option. Kept by Schaefer. 24, 23 yard line. Uh, the option play. That's what, first, second time they've run that? That's uh, first time they've run it. Uh, they've had some bootlegs. And they've handed the football off the other time. But that time they came out on the option. I don't know if they ever pitch it, but if he pitches this ball, Brinson's loose down the sideline, too. I mean, they might want to look at this later on and tell him to go ahead and pitch the football. Because right now, they're into not making mistakes. They probably don't want to pitch it and risk a fumble. Well, we've got a timeout called by McKinley. That is the last timeout for McKinley in this first half. Gives us a chance here to uh, talk about some of the outstanding students. State Farm Insurance Agencies of Stark County in 1480. Proud to highlight the Stark County Scholar Athletes for the class of 2003. And where today our featured athletes are John Erickson from Massillon, Stephen Lewis from Camp McKinley, and Molly Radway from St. Thomas. John Sports Swimming GPA was four point. Stephen Sport Baseball GPA 4.62. And Molly's GPA 4.1, her sport was swimming. So congratulations to these fine young athletes. State Farm Insurance, 1480, WHBC, wishing the uh, youngsters success in continuing their education and their athletic endeavors. Two minutes, 46 seconds left in the half. Bulldogs looking at first and 10 now. After the option run by Schaefer, it's at the 24-yard line. Good right, the lone setback. And they're going to give it to Brinson. Coming around left to right, and Brock Hives got in the hole. But look at Brinson scored through. Nothing there, and Ryan Brinson is to about the 18-yard line of Massillon. He was one ankle tackle from going the rest of the distance. That fullback fake up the middle, and then Brinson on the counter coming around. Lock running 223 in the first half. The Bulldogs can punch this one in. Back counter pulling the left guard and he avoids the tackle right there by the defensive uh, end. Oh no, that was the linebacker Hines. He avoided him and got up in there for five. Good right up the middle, 15. Keeps his balance to the 10. Good drive down 
to the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs. That cross block on that two-man side again. Oscarella and the guard is Alatsis, I believe. Good ride at Junior, 5'10", 170. McKinley, first and goal. Just outside the six-yard line. Princeton's a wing back. That's Jackson in motion. And again, well, Schaefer looked like the option. And Schaefer got to the five, and that's all. Now they, uh, that time, uh, tried that option play again, but Tigers had it well diagnosed. And we're all sitting out there waiting on it. What didn't develop like it did the other time. Well, the clock's running, 128. Keep in mind, McKinley has no timeouts left. They're looking a second down and goal. The ball at the Tiger five-yard line. Still a lot of time. Brinson to the left of the slot. Jackson wing right. Good right fullback. Jaffer looks to throw. Back of the end zone. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Jackson. Schaefer probably could have run that in. He had, a, he had an alley there to run straight up the football field, and he might have been able to score on the run, although Himes is sitting there number seven. I guess not. Tries to hit Jackson at the back of the end zone, goes off his fingertips. Had to throw it pretty high or somebody was going to get it. It's going to be uh, third down. McKinley just sent Raybar Morgan. I would look receiver. for some kind of a running play to the left here, so in case they don't get it, they can kick the field goal. Morgan 6'4", Schaefer is going to alley-oop to Morgan. I wondered about that, and it's knocked away. Nice defensive play by White. Good He'll thinking there, trying to take advantage of a short cornerback and up with 6'4", Morgan on a fade at the back corner of the end zone. And they'll go for the field goal with 102 left to go. I thought they might try a run to the left side. This is a bad angle from the right hash with the freshman kicker, Zach Campbell. Twenty-two yard attempt. Tento will hold. And you're right, the angle's right to the left. Snap, spot, kick up. And Campbell that hit it with the upright. Well, 59 seconds to go in the first half. It's Kent McKinley 19, the Massimo Tigers doubling. Here's the field goal. Good pressure from the right. He hits it right down the middle. Bad yeah. angle and all. Yeah, Brick Shepard's reaction is like, let's go, guys. Let's, let's not go. get down here. Game's not over. So the Bulldogs now with a safety, a field goal, and two touchdowns. Uh, you know, Jim, they've controlled the ball on the ground and taken, you know, Maslin's offense in the second quarter wasn't on the field very much. Yeah, McKinley, I'm just looking quickly at Robert Jeffrey's sheets here. 61, there's 100, about 111 yards here at halftime so far. But a lot of that in the second quarter. Yeah. There's the Bulldog uh, scoring drive, led to the field goal. Again, they're trying to pop it up to that second line. Taken by White at the 20-yard line, 25, 30, and brought down at the 30-yard line. The tackle made by Goodright. So the Bulldogs have to be very pleased with this first half. They lead at 19-0, just 55 seconds to go. At the 30-yard line, uh, Tigers have Steve Himes at quarterback in the shotgun. And they'll give it to Tuffy Woods, and Woods goes nowhere. Antoine Height was there to knock him backwards and also helping out on the top uh, tackle for McKinley, Pronomopoulos, the linebacker. Again, that handoff was clear up at his neck. I don't understand why we're having so much trouble with the handoff in the 10th game of the season here. I know Himes has been injured, but still. 
played 30, a lot of quarterback before that. 33 seconds. Hines wants to go deep, up in there. Now he's forced to scramble, and down he goes at the 33-yard line. Abdul Zaire, along with Mike Kirksey, Kirk I believe. You're right. There's a look at Mike. 17 seconds, and Maslin's going to call a timeout. They have one left. They're looking at third down and close to seven. Bulldog defense has shut Maslin down here on the ground. 26 minus 12, about 14 yards, uh, he says, on the ground. And in the air, they have two interceptions and 31 yards passing in 14 attempts. Bulldogs against the shotgun have basically been in a nickel front with three, three, uh, three down linemen and uh, four linebackers and four guys in the secondary. One of the linebackers goes out as like a rover. And at that point, uh, they pretty much shut it down. Let's get out on the sideline to Dan Belford. Hey guys, different Bulldog team that we've seen this year. Someone walked by me from one of the boosters from McKinley, gave themselves a thump on the chest and said, this is what we're playing with today, a lot of heart. And hey, the defensive unit's got a guest coach today. Kenny Peterson is on the sideline. Must be a bye week for Green Bay. He was giving them a little instruction as the game goes. Back up to you. We come back to action. This is Himes trying to run it around the right side on third down and six or so. And he has nowhere to go. One second, that's it. It's halftime here at Fawcett. And the McKinley fans standing ovation for the effort of their football team as the Bulldogs lead at halftime by a score of 19 to nothing. And we'll be back with halftime activities after we take this timeout. Sarda presents football stars of the future. Sarda salutes the 2003 Canton Midget Football Champions, the Falcons. Under head coach Vern Tyson and his staff, the Falcons are making young men football stars of the future. Hey, Falcons, now that you won the championship, what are you going to do next? Sarda, come ride with us. What do you think you're honking at, huh? What, you don't like the way no, I drive? No, no. What, you want to get me a drive? I do not know. You want a piece of me? What's going out and get this from, huh? Where are you going to go now? Well, you can't speed it up by anybody now. You think you're... At Loudon Motors, you'll find revolutionary ideas that other dealerships just don't offer. <laughs> Loudon Motors, the area's fastest growing inventory of pre-owned vehicles. Trunk monkey pending approval by Attorney General. All right, back in the truck. I was working in the garage and I smelled smoke. I quickly determined it was a grease fire. I knew grease fires were different from other type blazes, but I wasn't sure the best way how to handle such a conflagration. So I asked myself, what would Jared do? I'd get a veggie delight on meat, or maybe with the honey oat bread. Sorry, what was your question again? The veggie delight from Subway, eat fresh. It is halftime at Fawcett Stadium and our downtown Fort Scoreboard. McKinley 19, Maslin Tigers nothing. As we kick things off for halftime, our Subway halftime show. Let's go down to the field. Here's the Maslin Tigers swing band.
community sponsors of the game are Graphic Enterprises, scoring points for your business and adding color to your season. Graphic Enterprises is a proud supporter of all Stark County athletes. Here's to a great year, and remember, think Graphic Enterprises for Minolta digital copiers and printers. Rick Black Photography and Digital Imaging, the official photographer for the McKinley Bulldogs. Catch all the action on our website, rickblackphoto.com. Westfield Shopping Town, Belden Village. Invites you to Westfield Works Wonders, an exclusive shopping night Sunday, November 16th. Designed to kick off your holiday shopping and support your favorite charity. Stop by customer service for details. Alliance Imaging, Belden Village Open MRI Center. High performance in an open environment. Look for the blue O. Up here you have to work as a team. The union's on my team. To get the job done right, done safely. The union helps us make sure that the site is safe and that we're safe. Looking out for us up here and in other ways. It's like with our apprentice program. It made sure I had the right kind of training. So I knew how to take care of myself and take care of my job. It's a real good feeling to be a part of it and a part of history. Mix 94.1. Canton's best mix. More variety in the mix. By the hand, take me by the hand, pretty mama, come and dance with your daddy all night long. Mix 94.1. Mix 94.1. And then I saw her face. I'm a more music, more variety, and Terry and Maddie in the morning on Mix 94.1. And we're back at Fawcett Stadium, our Subway halftime show, and our downtown Ford scoreboard. McKinley over the Tigers at Maslin by a score of 19 to nothing. We hope you're enjoying this live broadcast of the McKinley Maslin game at your home. And hey, you got some time to run out to Subway and stock up with the food for the second half. All right, six inch or 12 inch. I understand at least the one I could go to on West Dust. It's a buck extra for extra meat. Okay, that's all I know. Halftime show continues. The Subway halftime show, and here comes the McKinley marching band.
Great halftime show by both the McKinley and Maslin Bands here at this McKinley Maslin contest on our Subway halftime show. Downtown Ford scoreboard, McKinley 19, Maslin nothing. We're back right after this timeout. Community sponsors of the game are Canton Baptist Temple. You can find something for everyone at Canton Baptist Temple. For more information about their ministries, visit their website at cantonbaptist.org. Pritchard's Roof Chimney and Siding Company. Honesty is the best policy. Customer satisfaction is guaranteed. Call Pritchard's Roof Chimney and Siding Company at 330-454-1478 for a free estimate. Spectrum Orthopedics, we've got you covered. Multiple locations to serve all your orthopedic and sports medicine needs. Serving all area hospitals, visit us at spectrumortho.com. Dr. Laser. Dr. John Laser and his wife Robin, daughter of the late Jack W. Kreider, who is a member of the McKinley Football Hall of Fame, wish both the McKinley Bulldogs and Maslin Tigers success in their seasons. <laughs> At Sutter, we love football. Any kind of football, especially Stark County High School football. That's why after a long day of working real hard at Sutter, we get together to play a little football. Congratulations to all of Stark County High School football teams for a great season. Come right with us! Bankruptcy, divorce, no credit or bad credit. Procar Auto Group wants your old junker and they'll give you $600 for your trade. You give me $600 for this piece of junk? That's right, $600. How much? $600. 2002s and 2003s at every location. Over 600 certified vehicles to choose from. Open bankruptcy, bad credit, we'll get you financed, guaranteed. This month only at all 10 Pro Car locations. Better cars, better selection, and 100% approval rate, guaranteed. On the downtown Ford scoreboard is Canton McKinley 19, the Massillon Tigers nothing, as it's been a very impressive first half for McKinley. And it's time to take a look at our Sarda touchdown spotlight. During the uh, first half, the Tigers, uh, of course, did not dent the scoreboard. McKinley with the uh, safety and a field goal and two touchdowns. We'll take a look at Ryan Brinson's uh, touchdown, the first one, two yards out, 7-11 left in that second quarter. Yeah, Brinson does a heck of a job right here keeping his feet it gets hit and finally struggles his way another two yards into the end zone gets the ball over the line real great second effort and then ryan scored the 519 left about two minutes left with that a 49 yard to touchdown run and again it's 19 nothing and halftime that's our touchdown spotlight for the game's first half brought to you by stark area rta come ride with us before we uh, turn over to coach glass have him analyze it a bit if our statistics are ready for the first half. We'll uh, take a look at those. Well, you know, Jim, uh, coming into the ball game, I felt that if McKinley could establish a rushing game, which I thought they would, they would win the football game. And at this point, it looks like that's what's happening. Uh, Tigers have four first downs to McKinley's eight. Passing yardage. Maslin with 31, McKinley only 32, but in rushing, a huge difference. The Tigers with 18 total yards rushing, McKinley with 111. And they've controlled the clock and the line of scrimmage by running the football. Turnovers, Tigers with uh, two turnovers, both interceptions, uh, both big key interceptions, incidentally. Penalties, Tigers with four for 30 yards, McKinley with six for 30 yards. Well, some individual uh, stats for you. Tuffy Woods of Massillon, how McKinley shut their running game down. He's got eight carries, his 13 yards. Uh, Hyams, the quarterback, five carries, 17 yards. Pollock has been sacked twice for minus 12. And in the air again, the Tigers uh, only uh, 31 yards between Pollock and Hyams. They've thrown it 14 times with two interceptions. Each quarterback with, uh, well, Pollock's got two completions and Himes with uh, two completions. So it's four of 14 is what they've hit between them. For the, the Bulldogs, uh, it was tough sledding for Ryan Brinson early on, three carries, no yards, but 
the next three carries. He ends up with 61 yards. Uh, Theo Goodright, the fullback, same way. Up to the first three carries, a little tough sledding, but right now at halftime, he's got seven carries and 39 yards. Schaefer, the quarterback, has hit the three of six for 32 yards. But, and Glass had talked earlier pregame that uh, he thought this was a winnable game for McKinley based on the, the running game. Yeah, I thought if McKinley could hold up defensively, that their running game would be the difference in the game because the Tigers have had no running game all year long that I know of that, to speak of. And in this ball game, if you can control the line of scrimmage and run the clock in your favor, get a lead, uh, then at that point, you're going to have a real good shot at winning. I don't think uh, uh, the Bulldogs are real good right now at coming from behind in some of these games, but uh, they uh, they have the lead 19 to nothing, and at that point, they can run the clock with their running game and play decent defense. They've got a shot to win this. Well, Ryan Brinson coming into this game was just a little over 1,000 yards, averaging 6.4 yards. He scored 11 touchdowns, and you go over to the Tigers. Their leading rusher was their quarterback, Prime, with 321. Tuffy Woods with 316, but Woods uh, with only 3.7 yards per carry. Now, in the air, it's uh, Steve Hyam, we told you, I think in the first half, he's thrown for 1,249 yards coming into this game, whereby the quarterback for McKinley, Mike Schaefer, had thrown for 535 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions. They uh, just haven't thrown the ball as much as the Tigers. Maslin's thrown it over 200 times coming into this 10th uh, ball game. Uh, it's from that spread offense with, you know, constantly in the shotgun, they throw the ball a lot. They'll even throw it out. Uh, we've learned they try to throw it out of their own end zone when they handed it off and got a safety. Well, last week in the Hardy game, we saw Massillon throw it about 45 times. Now, right now, they get 14 passes. Uh, we're going to see the ball in the air quite a bit. Yeah, if they have the ball. You yeah, know, they one of the things they've got to do is figure out how to stop McKinley's running game. And right now, the, the wing T parts of McKinley's running game are giving them fits. They're not able to stop good right and a, and a short side uh, uh, attack that they're running to the fullback and they're not consistently able to stop Schaefer on the keep on the on the option so you know they've got to somehow or another figure out how to put the clamps on their running game get the ball back <laughs> well each team's got approximately 28 snaps in that first half the Tigers will kick off to McKinley to start the second half the Bulldogs would love nothing more than to take this and move it downfield and really put the hurt. It's really a short kickoff taken at the 34-yard line to the 39. I think that was by design. I'm not really sure. Yeah, it was. I don't know that he wanted to kick it that short, but he did. Well, number 48, that's uh, Jeffrey Bond with the, uh, the return. So we'll mark it at the 40-yard line on uh, now an overcast day, but it's like the dark clouds. Uh, I think the potential lightning storm uh, went over us. Out of the way. And, uh, looking good for the rest of the afternoon. Again, ball should play here at 6.30 today against a very good Geneva team. Should be a good football game. Mike Schaefer, the junior at quarterback, will give it off to Theo Goodright. They were successful a couple of times, but... In that first half, Goodright runs right into Brock Himes. Started the second half with the fullback trap up the middle, and Brock Himes, that good linebacker from the Tigers, steps up and stuffs it. No gainer. Second down. Well, they have marked it at the 41 with his progress. There Kenny is, Peterson. yeah, Kenny Peterson. Green Bay with a bye week this week. Good camera shot, guys. Image video running right the game today. Schaefer back. Pressure's coming. Throws deep for Brinson. Incomplete. Mike White on the coverage. Had to throw it early. Facing a blitz from the top of the screen. Didn't have time. Wanted to hit Brinson right down the pipe. He had him open, but had to throw it too early because of the blitz. So it's going to be third down at nine. Get the ball at the Bulldog. Replay. Morning. The two Tigers coming from the top. Got hit just as he threw it. Brinson was open. He just couldn't zero in on him. No time. Third down nine. Wing to the right side. Slot left. Tiger six upon the line of scrimmage. They give it to Brinson, who gives it back to Jackson. 
but that doesn't fool the Tigers take it down at the 40-yard line. That little inside counter we see so much from Maslin Perry all the time. Give the ball to the running back going wide to the right, and then he hands it to the wing back coming back. There's Brinson coming back. Here's Jackson coming back with the football and tackled by Dickerhoof. No fourth down. And funny situation. Nice kick at the 28-yard line. That is Relford. And to the 32, and a flag is down. Get a block in the back. I believe we're going to take a timeout, and we'll be back. When you care about your car, you want to keep it protected. No one understands that like your state farm agent. We live where you live. That's why more people insure their cars with State Farm than anyone else, because we care about you the way you care about your car. In Maslin, see State Farm agent Dan McMasters. Or in Canton, see Paul Hirschberger for your insurance needs. Time out. On the downtown court scoreboard, McKinley 19, Massillon nothing. And the ball has been moved back to the Tiger 18. 18. I'm not sure that's the correct spot, but I think it is. That's where they're going to put it. They're setting the chains now. They're having a little conference there. We have 10.37 to go in the third quarter. 19-0, McKinley leading it. They led 2-0 after one on the safety. Two touchdowns to the field goal in that second quarter. Bulldogs got the running game uh, going and sort of made the difference so far in the game. Right now, game play is stopped because they're repairing the down marker. <laughs> One of the stakes. Where the down marker is, you can't really see it. It's up top of your screen. It's on the masculine side that they're trying to fix and reset. I guess they've got it ready to go. CCI has teamed up with 1480 to recognize the player of the game from each team. We'll choose the CCI players of the game at the end of the broadcast. Great folks at CCI. Star of communication. We got Tuffy Woods trying to sweep the left side. Nowhere to go. Adams to Denny was right up there to bring him down. Picture perfect tackle. Had his head right across the front. Drove his feet after he made contact. Good fundamental football there. This is power sweep, reach play. Everybody reaches to the outside. They try to double down to the inside. Nobody on Studenny. Got his head across in front. Took him down for a one-yard loss. Second down and 11. Tigers need to get something going. Trailing 19 nothing. A little delay handoff. And I believe that's Woods. 24-yard line. They're going to be looking at third down and maybe six. That was Woods with another carry. Counter gap play. They block everybody down to the left. Pull the left guard and left tackle. Run it off with like a draw thing. He picks up eight yards. Third down three. Shotgun. I have your quarterback. Oh, it's picked up by Abdul Zaire at the 25 yard line. Third interception of the day for the Bulldogs. Great field position. Himes trying to go to the flat to pick up the first down. Lake Abdul Zaire, a senior, going out in style so far. Great interception. McKinley's playing this nickel defense with a free defensive back. That was Zaire on that side. Picked it off. Five interceptions last week and three this week. Yeah, yeah. And these have been killers as Nine far as field position goes. 926 at the third. Last three passes the Tigers have thrown a bit picked off. Little counter play. Rince, Princeton. 15. 10. He's in touchdown. Ryan Princeton. What a ball game. Same play they ran when he broke the 49-yarder. Only it went to the right this time instead of the left. 
broken tackle at about the eight yard line. Pulled free, went for the score. You see the fake reverse pivot, hand to Brinson coming back up. Right here about the eight, breaks loose from Himes and scores. That'll make it 25 nothing. Zach Campbell will try to add the point after. Snap spot, kick is up, and it is good. 26 for Kimberly, the pass of the 9-19 to go in the third. We're back after we take this timeout. Bankruptcy, divorce, no credit or bad credit. Procar Auto Group wants your old junker, and they'll give you $600 for your trade. You'll give me $600 for this piece of junk? That's right, $600. How much? $600. 2002s and 2003s at every location. Over 600 certified vehicles to choose from. Open bankruptcy, bad credit, we'll get you financed, guaranteed. This month only at all 10 Procar locations. Better cars, better selection, at 100% approval rate, guaranteed. On the downtown board scoreboard, McKinley 26, Massillon nothing, and boy, the spirit really subdued on the Tiger sideline. Another interception, McKinley turns it into points. That was well, well you know, one Jim, play. The handwriting is on the wall right now in large letters. One play, 21 yards. Bellstore Sitko will be bringing you this kickoff. They'll say we're still holding up the game out there, and they've been ready. There we go. At the 40-yard line, Campbell to kick it away. Both teams using the short kick. This one doesn't turn out quite the way they want. It's too deep. It's at the 30, 36-yard line with the return. That was Mike White on the return. Got to clear out to the 38. 9.13 to go in the third. No, oh, no, it's less than that, 35. And Maslin's offense, they better do something now. Yeah, if you're going to do it, you better be, get, get around to doing it. Now they spotted it at the 36. They added 36 back to the 35, now to the 36. Steve Hines goes under center. He'll give it off to Ramon Kelly, the junior. And the Tigers is unable to get a running game going. Counter gap play again. Watch the right guard, right tackle pull. Good defense there by the defensive end. Height, wrong arm to puller. Second down eight, Himes to roll. Pressure's coming, Himes is gonna go. Whoa, Whoa that's gonna be ripped a down. Penalty. Flag is down as Himes is taken down and out of bounds about the 34 yard line. Himes bounces right back up and runs out on the field like I'm okay. Caught him by the helmet. He reached for the shoulder pad, but he got the helmet. Officials having a conference there right now on the McKinley sideline. I don't know what the conference would be. Whether it's 5 or 15, I would imagine. Personal foul is going to be 15. Well, that'll take the ball. Here's Hines about keeping the... the ball. He wants to throw it. He's got pressure. He heads for the sideline. Right here, hooks the mask. Out of bounds. It's Ali, the middle guard. Football will go up to the McKinley 46 yard line. Maslin across midfield for the first time in a long time. 8.34 to go. Tigers have a trip package to the top, and this is Himes. Get his run all the way. Got the corner on Studenti down the sideline and knocked down the bounds. Yeah, it's going to come back, though. There was a block in the back out there right at the first down stake. Wide receiver trying to get a block on um, Studenti. Holding. 
be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. They want to, this is the option. What they want to do is pitch the ball here, and he decides to run it. Ogletree in hot pursuit. He gets blocked. Right there is the penalty. I don't know. That doesn't look like much of a penalty, does it? Uh, takes the ball back to the Massillon 47 yard line, 827. 26 nothing here in the third. McKinley on top. There they go for the shotgun. Looking, looking. Pressure's coming. Scrambling. Down. Studeni hits him at the 47 yard line. Uh, Great hit by Studeni again. That's a second big time tackle that we've seen out of him in this quarter. Salah Ali also chasing and helping out. Be second down and 16. Well, Himes trying to find some place to throw the football on the replay here. Hot pursuit by the McKinley defense. Stadeni comes up from the secondary. Ohio back to action. Picked off again at the 43. Ogle three. Ogle three in the masculine territory at the 33 yard line. My goodness, four interceptions here today. Bulldogs sitting in the passing lanes just trying to wait on the ball. And that's so. They're dropping, they're bringing three and dropping eight. Real difficult to throw the ball into eight people. Ogletree sitting right in the passing lane. Watching Steve Himes go to the sideline. Rick Jeff was over talking to him. It has to be just a terrible afternoon for the senior. Himes come over there to make the staff a pass. Well, that's the, what uh, he needs to do. You throw it, you better get the guy. <laughs> Four interceptions. McKinley at the Tiger 32 yard line. Bulldog defense. What a game. Schaefer looking maybe to open. put the lid on it and overthrow Brinson. Oh, yeah, I tell you what, Schaefer had to tight end. Rafe was wide open behind the secondary at about the 12 yard line. Never saw him. Want to throw back to Brinson going down the pipe. That was the call. And that's where he threw it. Boy, Rafe was open by six yards behind the secondary. That is only the eighth attempt by Schaefer today. Like I said, three of eight. Last four have been incomplete, two of this half. So we have 734 left in the third. 26 nothing. McKinley on top with the 111th annual meeting. There's your turnover story. Four interceptions for the Tigers. Jackson in motion. They give it to the fullback. And good right. Nowhere to go. Jackson was supposed to get a block on the defensive end. The defensive end came hard across his face. Himes at the linebacker spot, brother, made the hit. It's going to be third down and 10 now, McKinley. The ball at the maximum 32-yard line. 7-10 remaining in the third quarter. Started out beautiful and sunny. Still a pleasant day, but uh, quite overcast right now. Jackson in motion. Here's the tie. They're going to try to hit the tight end. No, nope. going to run it. Schaefer. Fumbles the ball. Fell on, though, by McKinley about the 27-yard line. Well, they ran the same pass route they ran the last time that the tight end broke open. They ran it again. This time they covered it. So Schaefer elected to run the football. Tackled by Gillespie. No. What? Gillespie fell on the football. Oh, Gillespie recovered the fumble. All right. Your hand signals confused me. <laughs> Here's a replay. Fake to the fullback, fake to halfback coming around. He wants to throw back to Brinson. It's hit right there and then scrambles from five yards upfield and loses the football, loses the handle on it. Gillespie falls on it. We got apparently a timeout being called, so we're going to take a timeout and we'll be back. Hey, Dad, there's all the big fish. They're all here. Come to Tim's Tavern for the catch of the day and enjoy the greatest beer batter fish around. Famous for fish, broiled and deep fried, offering a variety of homemade soup and sandwiches, succulent seafood, and tender chicken. Plan your next family meal at Tim's Tavern or enjoy dinner out with friends. Tim's Tavern, tucked into the cove at Myers Lake, located near the CYC. Hey, Tim, am I big enough yet? Can't hear me. 
On the uh, downtown Ford scoreboard is McKinley 26 and Massillon nothing. Just a reminder, we'll be choosing the Tim's Tavern catch of the day at the end of the game. Tim's Tavern, famous for fish. Fourth down and six for McKinley. Outs in the shotgun. Schaefer with time, steps up, rifles caught. Gillespie at the 13. Gillespie to the 10, out of bounds at the eight yard line. Gillespie has become their go-to guy in a passing game and he showed why there as he ran straight off and ran a, ran a smash route hard into the middle. Straight off the left side and it took a 90 degree cut across the middle. Brinson drove deep and cleared everybody out. Gillespie catches the ball coming underneath the safeties. Takes it into the eight yard line before he gets thrown out of bounds. So first and goal McKinley at the Tiger eight yard line. They're gonna give it to Goodbright, five, four, maybe the three. Dalquist makes the stop from his safety position. And we've got an injury timeout. Stops the clock with 5.50 to go in the third quarter as the Bulldog player is down at the 10 yard line. We'll take a timeout and we'll be back. The nightmare continues at the factory of Terry Last year, we woke up the creatures and bills of the building's past. This year, they were out. Hey, high school veteran, on such days, and there were these. You saved those days. If you see the factory of Terry Hurst in the local street, ask about upcoming events to receive promotional items. Then, follow us to the factory. We'll see you in Canada at 1036 Morgan Avenue South. For more info, check out factoryfair.net. We've got what scares you, Freddie and Jason, live every night. Scoreboard, McKinley 26 and Mastelon nothing. As the injured player, don't like to see this, the left guard, Marquis, Thomas Marquis, a senior 5'11", 240. It's like an ankle maybe, I don't know. Put a little weight on it, not much. At the three-yard line, second down goal. Look at height, you got the Indiana eye. Yeah, nice that's team. where he plays in that stacked eye. Sliding to his left. They're going to give it to Brinson. And Bull breaks, tackles, spins his way down to about the six inch line. Did not get in, but Great again, effort. Yep. Didn't have a hole. He's made his own hole. When he lines up that up back, he's a, he's a 6'3", 285. He is a horse. That's third and goal, about six inches away, although officially a one-yard plunge, and good right gun into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Bulldogs in a runaway here on this Saturday afternoon, now 32 to nothing. It's the isolation play they run out of that set. They take height straight up on a linebacker, and... Reverse pivot, give the ball to Goodright, the fullback, who follows him into the line of scrimmage. Found a nice big hole, spun, got in the end zone. 444 left to go in the third. Campbell on to try the point after. Well, you never can figure this game out, can you? Extra point, try up, and good. 33 for the Bulldogs. Nothing for Massillon. Let's get down to Dan Bell for Daniel. We're down on the field on the sideline guy with Kenny Peterson. First of all, you said you're not a throwback guy, but we got the Howie Long thing going on here. Oh, yeah. Howie Long is a great player, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a defensive player that's just relentless and just an effort guy, you know what I mean? And, and 
I want to end up where he ends up. Let's talk about the game today. Let's talk about years back. I mean, you've been in a lot of these. I mean, it, it, if you can't relay the intensity to us going into a ball game like this and what the kids go through. Man, I mean, what, what bigger high school game would you rather play in it than the Mass McKinley game? You know, I spoke to the kids before the game, and I, I just, you know, basically told them how important this game is. And, and, and you know, for some of the seniors, this might be some of the last times they ever played football. Just leave it all on the field and just go out there and play McKinley-style football. I saw you with some of the defensive players back here. You're pretty good with the chalkboard back there, uh, X's and O's. Well, I've been playing for so long, so now, you know, I just kind of, you know, educate them with some of the stuff that I know, you know what I mean, some blocking scheme and things like that. You've been at every level here, Ohio State now at the Packers. What's that transition like to the pros? Uh, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. You know, playing, me playing Ohio State really helped me get ready for the NFL. And, uh, you know, only thing different is, you know, guys are bigger, <laughs> way bigger. And, uh, and things are just a little bit faster, but that's, that's it. They're much bigger than you, man. It's scaring me. It is. Kenny, thanks so much for your time. You. Kenny Peterson, guys, back up to you. All right, Dan, thank you. Bell Star Sitko with that kickoff. It goes out of bounds. We'll see if they re-kick it or take it at the 35. You know, McKinley Smart, they buy the uh, contract of Peterson out of Green Bay and pay him to be on the sidelines every game. Well, you, you understand now why they're playing so well. They're, they're frightened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny says, I'm going to slap you yeah, off. It's, it's either I play well or you'll kill me. <laughs> They go from the 35, first down and 10, but again, the Bulldogs just stuffed that running game. Bulldogs playing with a lot of confidence right now. They, they, you could see it in the second quarter where they just knew that they were controlling the line of scrimmage and they knew they were gonna win this football game. Duffy Woods, the ball carrier. You see a replay, Duffy Woods trying to make a hole and there isn't any. A lot of black shirts meeting him at the pass. 414 in the third. It's at the 34. Duffy Woods, a tough day. 11 carries, 18 yards. Falling back in a quarterback, the young sophomore. Good coverage in the secondary. He's got a run with the ball. 40 and down. Out of bounds to the 42 yard line. Ogletree on the, on the tackle. Good thought by Pollock there. They've been putting it up when there wasn't anybody open, and they've picked off four of them. At that point, he. Elected to pull it down and run out the back side, which is where you need to go is out the back door You see the fake to the tailback and He's looking downfield and everything's covered because basically they're throwing into eight people Rafus lost contain on the back side when he fell but here comes Ogletree the outside linebacker and pulls him out of bounds third down and what three about three Tigers desperate for some points here today, and they give it off to Ramon Kelly. And I don't think he got it. I think I think Height got him is what I think. <laughs> Antoine Height, pretty good football game today. Offensively, made a nice catch, blocking out of that eye. Defensively. And the football, all of a sudden, a big arm comes out <laughs> and stops it. What do you do if you're Rick Shepas now? You, you got to give your team some momentum and it's well, fourth down. You got to go down, for yeah. it. You know, you're down 33 points. It's fourth and one on your own 44, but you still got to go for it. 322 in the quarter. They got it. Ramon Kelly breaks through, spins Kelly with a heck of a run inside Bumble. the ball. He fumbled the ball, but the mass of the Tigers have it. Diving on that thing with Bowser. Bowser caught it on the bounce in midair. Straight handoff, man blocking, found a crease. Get a missed tackle there. Christian Smith hooks the arm, causes the fumble. Bowser catches it on the bounce. First down. Massillon at the McKinley 39. Duffy Woods, 35, 34 yard line. Got a penalty flag on this play down here at the bottom. Line judge. 256 left in the third. 33 nothing. He just joined us. McKinley scored early. First minute of the play on a uh, safety. 2 nothing. Is that a motion penalty? I think they're five yards. Bog is at the 44 now. Be first down all over. First and 15. As Rick Sheppis 
signaling something into his offense. They go with the Crips package to the top of your screen there. Young sophomore Pauly staying in their quarterback. Looks to his left, throws to his left, and got the completion at about the 32 to Copeland. And boy, Ryan Fritzen just popped him a good one. They ran a quick post cut underneath the coverage, and Brinson was the safety and tried to collision the ball free is what he was trying to do here, and it didn't come out. came out late after the receiver was on the ground. Catches the ball and whack. Yeah, he was down he with was it. down. Rolled out of there. Ground cannot cause the fumble. So Copeland with the reception. And we're at 153 here at the third quarter clock moving Tigers second down they need about three Ralford in motion Holly throws deep Ooh, Christian Smith just tried for the uh, fifth interception of the day hey get your seats November 28th and 29th when Ohio's 12 top seeded high school football teams will buy for their state divisional championship titles books and tickets on sale now through November 17th if you'd like more information call 330 Four five eight two zero eight four. Three games here at Fawcett. Three games over at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Great weekend for you high school football fans. Third down. Falling again. Throws out pattern and had the man open. Copeland, but thrown well short. Play before they were trying to go to Gates on it quick pass he, you know, he just releases off the line they hit him on about the fourth step and uh, pop pass or whatever you want to call it McKinley covered it well had two guys right on so it's fourth down and three for Massive and the McKinley 32 yard line offset uh, slot top side Pollock will swing up. Knight throws it over the middle of foot behind his receiver. Yeah, trying to throw into five defensive backs. And Hauser was open again, but behind him. Just no way to throw that football. There's too many black shirts back there. And with no running game to make him get out of it, it's made a long day for quarterbacks from Maslin. Pollock dropping, a little play action fake. Throws the ball inside, and there's a lot of black shirts there. Trying to hit Mauser on a slam. See, Danny made him alter the throw. Anyway, the Bulldogs take over. Just inside their 32 with 137 to go in the third. McKinley on top. 33 nothing. McKinley had an unbalanced line to the left side. Brinson on, on, the, on the sweep. All the way out to the 48 yard line. Let's play it again with Video Safari. Video Safari, a world of adventure for the whole family. Tony lined up, left side unbalanced. Tossed the ball to Brinson on the sweep. Pulling guard was uh, Alatsis that picked up the one guy that maybe could have made the play. Brinson takes it out to the 48-yard line. Jeff Summers, Joe Mozzarella, the tackles in this game today for the Bulldogs, doing a nice job. Hand off to Goodright, breaks a tackle, and he's to the 39, 38-yard line. Kenley's really given some great second efforts. They just haven't been able to stop the uh, wing T aspect of Coach Cross's uh, offense. But Kenley has not been in an eye all day. They have done nothing but run wing T football. Other games, they'd show different formations, right? Well, They're yeah. I mean, looks. some teams do a really good job of defending the wing tee, and you don't run it, you get in the eye. Uh, or the shotgun attack. But so far, the Tigers have not done a good job against the wing tee, and they've just stayed in it. Demetrius Robinson, who we've noticed in it, uh, the right guard spot. Too Penalty. Walks up five yards against the uh, Bulldogs. Cheer on the team before or after the game with that 1480 WHBC Bell Store Sitco School Spirit Static Sticker. Static stickers free and available to any Bell Store Sitco 
in Stark County. You can display yours, win $100 for your school's academic program. The $25 Bell Store Sitco cash card is for you. Complete rules, ask at your nearest Bell Store Sitco. They give it to Brinson. Brinson's got it to Gardner. 30, 10, another one. Jet sweep. Boy, he hit that corner. There was nothing They there. never saw that he had the ball. He was outside of everybody before anybody knew he had the football. Well, let's play the touchdown again with Vinio Zafari. Vinio Zafari, a world of adventure for the whole family. It was the handoff to Brinson. He was in motion across the formation, and he's outside. Nobody even sees him. Sprinting down the sideline, and with that speed he's got, I don't think they're going to catch him. Relford finally gets his hands on him in the end zone. Zach Campbell to try the point after to make it 40 to nothing. Kick is up and good. 24 seconds left in the third. It's Camp McKinley, 40. And Massillon, nothing. Ryan Brinson now with four touchdowns this afternoon. There is Ryan. What an afternoon, but you know, the line gets some credit, the wide receivers get some credit for throwing some blocks. A little over a thousand yards coming into the game for Ryan Brinson. Man, 24 seconds to go in the third. Well, Coach, you had a little feeling that the, the, the Bulldogs are doing this. There's what Brian Brinson's done this afternoon. 14 yards of carry. That's not, okay. too, not too bad. But uh, I thought the game could I took, push it the direction. Yeah, yeah. But a 40 point I told Sam Berkland there'd be 40 some points scored in the game, but I thought it'd be 20 for each team. <laughs> and Sam didn't believe me. He said, That's a lot of points for these two teams. And I said, Yeah, but I said, That's the way it's going to be. I didn't know. All 40 points were going to come uh, on the side of the Bulldog. Well, let's go again with the McKinley kickoff. Bell Store Sitco, and you're on the go. Back in 1990, well, we get the kickoff here. A little short one. Well, that was a missed ball. He was trying to pop it up to that second line again, and he caught it at the top of the ball and line drive it like an onside kick, and I'm sure that wasn't the intention. Another view of the last TD play from a different angle. You see the handoff there to Brinson going around the corner. And the corner out there was looking inside. Did you see that? Yep. Brinson was outside of him, and Relford was looking at the fullback running up the middle. Four plays, 68 yards. Those are the kind of drives you like to have, four plays or one. Good camera work by the folks at Image Video. And Pauly looking to throw. Knocked away down at the 25-yard line intended for Relford. And the defensive play made by Bradley Jones. Second big play Jones has made. One, he intercepted one earlier. This time he gets up in the air and taps the ball away over top of the receiver. This ball is well thrown. It's on the money. Just gets in there and gets up in the air and knocks it away. So with 15 seconds remaining, it's going to be second down at 10. You know, I didn't think there would be a lot of points scored today, but yet you look back over the uh, the series, there's 15, 60, seems like scored every year between these two teams. Yeah, that's what I thought. They always manage to score on each other. Well, Pauly struggling still here as he threw a little bit behind to Ramon Kelly. You go back to 1998, McKinley beat the Tigers 42 to 20, and that was the last McKinley win back in 98. Back in 94, remember that uh, 100 feet, 42, 41 overtime? The Tigers won that one. Well, I don't think there's very many one touchdown games in this whole history. You know, one or two touchdowns. They usually score three times a piece or more. Here in 2000, Massillon won 13 to 9. It's one of the lower scoring games you see as you go back through. Third down and 10. Tigers need to convert. Pauling looking left on the out. Copeland's got it. And it. it. Did he have it long enough? No. They say it's complete. So if Pauling does get it there, his receivers drop it. Six seconds to go in the third. Pollock's trying to pick up the first down here with a uh, sideline pattern. Copeland is there, has it, and drops it. 
Robert Jeffries uh, pushing the pencil today again. This reminds this is Massillon's second punt. You'd think they'd be ahead, but they've had all those interceptions and turnovers. So the second punt. Take it, 28 yard line. That's Christian Smith. Excellent return up to the 44. And that brings an end to the third quarter. After three, 40 to nothing. McKinley back into this timeout. Community sponsors of the game are Graphic Enterprises, scoring points for your business and adding color to your season. Graphic Enterprises is a proud supporter of all Stark County athletes. Here's to a great year, and remember, think Graphic Enterprises from Minolta Digital Copiers and Printers. Rick Black Photography and Digital Imaging, the official photographer for the McKinley Bulldogs. Catch all the action on our website, rickblackphoto.com. Westfield Shopping Town, Belden Village. Invites you to Westfield Works Wonders, an exclusive shopping night Sunday, November 16th. Designed to kick off your holiday shopping and support your favorite charity. Stop by customer service for details. Alliance Imaging, Belden Village Open MRI Center. High performance in an open environment. Look for the Blue O. It is 40 to nothing. But Kentley, as you take a look at some happy Bulldog cheerleaders. Kentley, I'm just looking back through, scored those 42 points in 98. And I'll tell you, they may set an all-time record here today. Back to 45, I have to still look back. Start the fourth quarter. Princeton has a strip from him. Got it back, though. Trying to run that little counter up in there. Kinley scored 44 points back in 1907. Yeah, it's got to be happiest as Coach Cross watching his offense uh, function somewhat similar. This is a tackle trap. You see tackle pulling from the left side, coming in and trapping. Brinson lost the football. Got it back. It's uh, second down and about eight. Maybe seven. Yep, Brinson. Starts right. Makes a nice little hesitation cut and got in the Tiger territory to near the 47-yard line. He's going to be maybe a yard short of the first down. Cut right between two tacklers. Brinson is a tailback with uh, special talent. He comes out, he stops a little here, trying to find it, and he cuts right between two guys and gets five yards, six yards. Ten forty-two left to go in this 111th meeting. They got two in motion again. Yeah. They did that yeah, before. The Same second thing. time. Yeah. Jackson and Brinson both went in motion. Two wingbacks. Two wingbacks gone in motion at the same time. You can't do it. Well, you can do it. But. Well, what they need to do is set down and get the stance and then snap the football. That's a shift. If they're both in motion at the snap, not workable. Let's go down the bells at the sideline. It's over on the Maslin sideline, and it, it's a lot of hung heads over here, but the coach is challenging them to, number one, lift your head. We're not out of the game, but we can never be out of it mentally. We have to come out. We have to perform the best of our abilities. But, you know, you look at these young men. They never enter this game, number one, with the intention of losing. Number two, you certainly don't want to leave this game getting manhandled. That is what's happening thus far. They're asking them to, to test their own character, see what they can pull out in this fourth quarter. Back up to you. Thank you, Daniel. It's third down for McKinley at their own 48-yard line, and they try to slam that fullback in there. Good right. He's just about a yard in the Massillon territory. But the Tigers do have to be in shock. I mean, if you ask 10 people today, probably six pick Massillon, four pick McKinley. But yeah. 40 to nothing. Massillon yeah, that, gave up 45. the score is surprising to me, the score. I, I would I picked McKinley to, to win it coming in. I'd seen both teams, thought McKinley was a little bit better, but I certainly didn't think they were 40 points better. Well, the interception. Yeah, the interceptions are just killing. McKinley's defense has played very, very well, and I think that is a compliment to their coaching staff and their defensive coaches. 
because uh, they realize that Maslin does not have a running game. Got a flag down. Potato got the kick away. Heads for the sideline. He's out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Now we'll have to wait and see what the uh, penalty is. This is McKinley's biggest uh, offensive output of the year. Procedure against the Bulldogs, so they're going to bring them back and kick it over since it went out at the 10-yard line. But both these teams play pretty tough schedules. Yeah, and I think, you know, looking, going back to what I was saying about the defensive coaches from McKinley, Steve Kovacs and Warren Miller, and Kovacs is the uh, defensive coordinator. I mean, they do a lot of film study, like all staffs, and I think they figured out that, uh, gee whiz, you can probably play a uh, nickel defense against these guys most of the ball game, and that's what they've done, and that's why you've got all the interceptions. They don't have a running game to make them honest. They've had a few penalties today. Seven for 57 for Maslin, nine for 55 for McKinley. So the Bulldogs to kick it away again. Leading at 40 to nothing early in the fourth. Pressure's coming, but the boot's away. Going to be taken at the 19-yard line by Billy Ralford. He's been quiet today. And good punt. Well, let's see if Ralford can He's get the corner. Be quiet now. What a move. There's his talent. Oh, out to the 46-yard line. First down, Bastille. And we're back after this timeout. I had the good fortune to be born here, and I've never left. This is where my friends are. Last year, I had kind of a scare. I had to have open heart surgery. I decided to go to Altman, and I'm glad I did. I'm as good as new, and they're making sure that I stay that way. Which is great, because my heart's always been in Canton. It only figures that's where I'd get it fixed. On the downtown Ford scoreboard, McKinley 40, Massa and nothing, and the Tigers like to get something on the board here. Decent field position, their 46-yard line. They stay with Pollock, the sophomore quarterback, over the middle, caught at the 46, and Brinson just puts the shoulder into Brad Hauser, who got the football. Nice read by Pollock. They had a blitz that time. Ogletree came off the edge. And Pollock unloaded it to Mauser right over the head, right over, right where Ogletree left from. He saw the blitz coming, threw it to Mauser. Nice sight read. Pollock, nice catch down at the 30 by Gates. Gates has been quiet all year, all, all game. Not all year, he's played well this year. But, uh, he had one big catch in the first quarter, but then since he's been uh, really, really quiet, they've been covering him well. That time he uh, catches a quick post. Does a nice job there. Pollock. And this at running back is Linnell Robinson, a sophomore. His first carry today. Robinson coming in 127 yards, 34 carries, about just under four point yards, uh, four yards of carry. We're down to 7.43, clock moving. And now, line judge throws the flag. Got to be somebody's in the neutral zone. They're looking at Massel. Procedure call on the Tigers. Somebody move after setting. So the ball is moved back to the McKinley 31-yard line. Look at the Maslin huddle. Now Coach Rick Sheppis. Second down, 11 for the Tigers. Stay with the shotgun. Slot to each side. Bulldogs showing blitz. Just bringing the four, though. Follicle steps up and down. Ogletree coming off the outside. Trips him up. Nice defensive play at the 32-yard line. time they needed any kind of pressure they try to bring Ogletree off the corner who has good speed 
hot pursuit right here and gets an ankle. Gets him on the ground. Clock at 6.40. And boom, 6.44, 6.43. Trips to the bottom, third down. Pauley throws deep down the sideline, knocked away. Rumford, the intended receiver, down around the two-yard line. Christian Smith back there with him. Christian Smith, one of the better little cornermen that uh, I've seen all year, really got up in the air for that one. No one from Massillon receiving-wise has had a, a big afternoon. Uh, six different players have caught passes, but Five of them, just one. Gates has caught a couple. It is fourth down. The McKinley fans wanting their defense to pitch a shutout here. On the 25th day of October, week number 10 of high school football. Three-man rush. Ball again deep for Alford. Christian Smith up in the air to help defend. All five foot five of it. <laughs> So the Bulldog defense does the job. We're back after this timeout. Whether I'm refereeing a high school football game or leading my sales staff at the Workshops Incorporated, one thing's for sure, it's always about teamwork. We'll give you the home team advantage on any job you need done. That means quality service from the kickoff to the last play. And our number one goal, making your team the winning team every time. Call in the home team, the Workshops Incorporated, for any job, small or large, 330-477-5200. On the downtown Ford scoreboard, 40 to nothing. You look at the McKinley sideline. We're talking about the Maslin receivers. Uh, McKinley's only completed four passes, but Chambers only thrown nine. And Four different McKinley players. Whole, whole attack passes. has been the running game and the wing T. The wing T running game of Coach Cross has functioned very, very well today. Three timeouts left for Massillon, two for McKinley. And this is Christian Smith now. See what he can do with the ball. And he's out to the 37 yard line. That's his first carry of the afternoon. Not sure what the attendance was today. Not near what normally McKinley Massillon games a draw. Fans are starting to, to leave here. Well, there's a lot of red shirts still here. A lot of the orange shirts have gone. <laughs> That's the way it is. Past years, the red and black had left early. The orange and black have stayed. Mark Jackson on the left side. Out across the 40, to near the 43 yard line. Right near the first down marker, right on the first down marker. And they're saying first down. They're moving the chains. Whole second offense coming on the field now for McKinnon. There's a lot of class on Coach Cross's part. Yep, the starters coming out of there. Number 10 going in the quarterback for McKinley now. It's going to be uh, Aaron Best. He is a junior, 5'9", 174. You see him right there, number 10. And we've got 5.22 left to go. I think Abed is going to stay on the ground. Whoops, they don't be kept it. I thought he handed it off. Best hey, kept it, though. He wanted to hand it off. <laughs> <laughs> and it popped out. Tobin and I thought had the ball, and then I saw Aaron Best going around the left side. He tries to make the handoff. Here's the short trap. For the oh, I see. Yeah, and he... It popped out, so he grabbed it and ran out around the end with it. The second down. Now a lot of people get playing time now. My goodness, more people coming in. Jeffrey Vaughn checking in the tight end in place of Rapist. Vaughn the sophomore. Both these programs hoping to uh, be back a little bit stronger next year. Got a fumble. See if he was down. Officials never saw the fumble, so I don't. I Massillon. think they're going to rule it down. Yeah. Nope. They give it to Massillon. Yep. Dovin and had it. That's a good call. Fumbled it. First pivot here. Give to the fullback coming off tackle. Dovin and the ball's out right there. It's on the ground and the Tigers fall on it. I'm not quite sure who's got it, but number 25 has the football. Who is? James Jamil Lemon. 
of the Tigers at the McKinley 48 out of the I formation. And they give it to Lindell Robinson. He goes down the right sideline inside the 40. Both teams out there now with their second groups. I see some McKinley. Uh, oh, yeah. McKinley's defense. first defense yeah, is still on the field. We got Maslin. Uh, That's a lot of Maslin's first guys are out there. Relford's out there, too. Well, the Tigers want to score. Kidley wants to say, no, we want to shut out. To the outside. Around the corner. That is 34. That's Robinson again, the sophomore. And he is inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Stops the clock with 4.12 to go. In these rivalry games in the last game of the season, you know you're not going to the playoffs or anything else. You've got a heck of a time talking to these kids and coming off the field. You know, they're seniors or whatever, and they've played all year, and they don't want to come. At the 18, Tigers would like to get on the scoreboard. Robinson again, over three, wraps him up. Robinson got into the 16-yard line. Get Massel with three timeouts. Hold on to two. Bulldogs led after one, two nothing. At halftime, they were up 19 nothing. 40 to nothing after three. That's what it is right now. With 3.43 to go. Pollock. Throw on end zone, Ralford. Ralford's got a touchdown. I believe the flag would get defensive pass interference. So Billy Ralford takes the pass from Pollock. About 18 yards for the first pass of the score, but we'll wait and make sure the penalty would have been on the defense. Get play action fake here to the tailback. Relford's running a post cut. Jones defending, put his hands on him and wrapped his arms around him. Yeah, I think it was defensive interference. No doubt. That was the call that the referee made while we were away there. Unusual uh, uh, formation. They want to fake Swinging him. gate. Relford will throw to the end zone for the two extra points. It is caught by Kurt Jarvis. So the Tigers go for two, get it. It's 40 to eight. We're back after this timeout. The nice thing about teamwork is that you always have others at your side. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. The achievement of a team is a result of the combined effort of each individual. Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is a progress. And working together is success. Good luck to all the Stark County teams from our team at Downtown Ford. On the Downtown Ford scoreboard, McKinley 40, Massillon 8. Hey, the play it again with Video Safari Movie for today is breaking away. Tune in to Fred and Pam Monday morning, and when you hear them ask for the play it again with Video Safari Movie, the title of the movie you'll be the first caller with the correct answer and you'll win a free movie rental from your friends at video safari i should have two winners on monday uh, one from last night the uh, hoover jackson game one from the game this afternoon reminder wednesday night tune into 1480 eight o'clock skyland pines the 59th annual stark county coaches of the uhbc football awards by Browns football tomorrow on WHBC. 1130 the pregame. It's going to be an onside kick and Adams to Denny right up there to grab it at the Massillon 48 yard line. Ball didn't travel 10 yards either, so it wasn't live. Massillon scoring drive, four plays, 48 yards, and then they ran the uh, swinging gate formation for the two point play. Why do they call it a swinging gate? Uh, I guess because of the way it looks. You've got a post over there with a the center and the holder and the. Uh, yeah. Swings open to the right. Well, you coaches, and some of your terminology, I'll tell you. Everybody calls things different things, too. That's bad. At the 48 for McKinley. 
second team offense still in there. And uh, got to pick up the running back here with the for you. It's 324 left to go. Fullback off tackle should have been Thoven in if they could stay with him. That was 34. That was Kirksey. Kirksey, Kirksey 34, I see. Yeah. Get him out of there. Still Aaron Best. Can we unbalance to the right? Run the wing T sweep. Oh, Gone nowhere. Ball carrier was uh, Beasley. Hey, get your seats to see high school football action at its best. Look for tickets for the 2003 Ohio High School State Football Championships, November 28th and 29th. On sale now through November 17th. Call the can and start County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Order your tickets. 330-458. 2084, that's 458, 20, 84. Fun weekend for you football fans. Three here at the Boston, three at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. It is third down. They need eight yards, leading 40 to eight. And curtsy again, the fullback straight ahead, about the 44, maybe the 43. And 203 left to go, and the clock just now going under two hours. Kimmy's going to punt it away. Now the Bulldogs will break a string of Tiger wins five straight. Last time McKinley won 1998. Tigers won in 99, 2000, twice in 2001, and then won last year. Taking as much time off the clock, and maybe they're going to let it run down, take a five year penalty. The clock is at 123 and at 122, and there's the flag. They'll take the delay of game. Yep, smart move. Five yard back, he's got some punt the ball a little farther. One twenty-two, you said? Yes. So Brian Cross will come in. Build a great program at Grove City. It's been a tough year for him, but in his first matchup with the Tigers, he will be the winner. Impressive with his first matchup with Michigan. Well, there's these games are season savers, you know. Ball at the Massillon 49. Tento hammers it to the 15 and Relford down about the 16. We're back after we take this timeout. Sarda presents football stars of the future. Sarda salutes the 2003 Canton Midget Football Champions, the Falcons. Under head coach Vern Tyson and his staff, the Falcons are making young men football stars of the future. Hey, Falcons, now that you won the championship, what are you going to do next? Sarda, come ride with us. On the downtown board scoreboard, 40 for the Bulldogs, 8 for the Tigers, 112 left to go. And Massillon will go from their 16 under center. They just could run the clock out. And the handoff, well, gone nowhere. Lost back to the 14-yard line. Play was supposed to hit off the left side. They run balance to the right and tried to run the tailback counter back to the left. Caleb White was the ball carrier. Clock is under a minute and running down here. Second down, 12. Throwing it deep, down the middle, count at the 35-yard line. I think it was Copeland on the catch. Up at the 40. Now where are they going to spot it? Now they're going to pick it up, put it at the 38-yard line. That is Copeland's second catch. Down to 19, to 18. They run it. It'll be the last play.
Pollock to throw. Count down at the 45. Ball comes loose. Was it dead? Was it a loose football? Was it incomplete? Two seconds to go. Two seconds on the clock. Where's McKinley gone? I don't know. It's not over. Game's not over. They're running down there to get the bell. Yeah, well, they ought to wait till the game's over. I think we give it to Copeland, and now the flag has been tossed. Game is not over. You can see the Bulldogs celebrating. Still two seconds on the clock. So we give the catch to Copeland. Coaches are shaking hands, and the officials wound the clock, and the game is over. All right. They're going to say it's over. Yep. So they run the last two seconds off. We'll be back start wrapping things up after this timeout. Bankruptcy, divorce, no credit or bad credit. Procar Auto Group wants your old junker, and they'll give you $600 for your trade. You give me $600 for this piece of junk? That's right, $600. How much? $600, 2002s and 2003s at every location. Over 600 certified vehicles to choose from. Open bankruptcy, bad credit, we'll get you financed, guaranteed. This month only at all 10 Pro Car locations. Better cars, better selection, and 100% approval rate guaranteed. Community sponsors of the game are Canton Baptist Temple. You can find something for everyone at Canton Baptist Temple. For more information about their ministries, visit their website at cantonbaptist.org. Pritchard's Roof Chimney and Siding Company. Honesty is the best policy. Customer satisfaction is guaranteed. Call Pritchard's Roof Chimney and Siding Company at 330-454-1478 for a free estimate. Spectrum Orthopedics, we've got you covered. Multiple locations to serve all your orthopedic and sports medicine needs. Serving all area hospitals. Visit us at SpectrumOrtho.com. Dr. Laser. Dr. John Laser and his wife Robin, daughter of the late Jack W. Kreider, who is a member of the McKinley Football Hall of Fame, wish both the McKinley Bulldogs and Maslin Tigers success in their season. Football is back. All the plays, all the action, all the Browns touchdowns. Here on 1480 WHBC. You expect anywhere else? Forty to eight, Canton McKinley winning the 111th matchup between these two ball clubs. We start to wrap things up, and we'll take a look at the Tim's Tavern, the catch of the day, and we're going to give it to the Bulldog big tight end Antoine Height, who made uh, really a nice catch to keep a, a touchdown drive going. Happened uh, early in the game. It was a 15-yard grab. This is a play-action fake. Schaefer rolls to his right, the tight end blocks, and then releases to the flat and turns up. And he's wide open, catches the football, gives him a first down on the three. So your friends at Tim's Tavern will award Antoine Height dinner four at Tim's Tavern. Let's get down to Dan Belford. He's got Brian Cross with him. Dan? And there's hugs and high fives going everywhere. Coach Cross with us. First, first your impressions. This is the first Maslin McKinley game that you've ever been involved in. Well, uh, it's everything that I thought it was going to be. And, and I got to give credit to our kids. They came out and played with heart today, more so than any other game this year. And that's what this football game's all about, is playing with heart. I, I read this week you were going to challenge them, play with emotion and execute. How do you all of a sudden just get them to that level and they came out ready to do uh, it? It's, it's nothing that I did. It's just something the kids did from within themselves. Uh, all week long, we just talked about what this meant to this program, what it meant to all the people that played here before and everybody that's going to play here in the future. And the kids took it upon themselves to get ready mentally and played with heart and emotion. That's what it was all about. You know, it's a team coming in, Maslin, who struggled also this year. The score surprised you today? Oh, the score really surprised me. Never did I dream that we put 40 points on the board and we'd hold them to eight points. You know, that wasn't anything in my dreams. But I got to give our defensive coaching staff credit. They had a great game plan. They did a great job. And uh, our offense did what we had to do. We took advantage of every mistake they made and we put it in the end zone. And I'm just happy for these kids because it's been a long year. 
Ryan, it's a pleasure to meet you. Congratulations and nice launch pad for next year. Thank you very much. Coach Cross and McKinley, guys, back up to you. All right, Bells, thanks for the nice job here at the 111th Annual Meeting. Now we go to the CCI, players of the game. I think Masson will be the first to admit they really didn't have anybody that stood out today when you get beat 40 to 8. But they have a, a senior receiver that uh, had made three catches, has had a nice year, Eric Copeland. So we're going to give the CCI award to Eric Copeland for the Massillon Tigers. And then you go to the McKinley. Well, a lot of great efforts, but Ryan Brinson runs for 152 yards, uh, picks off a pass, scores four touchdowns. So Ryan Brinson, the CCI award winner for the McKinley Bulldogs. So thanks to CCI, and they'll be giving the players a plaque and a letter of recognition, $100 going to the McKinley uh, Athletic Fund. There's uh, the final stats coming up from Robert Jeffries. Uh, first downs, Mass on 11, McKinley 14. That's uh, passing yardage, Mass on 118, McKinley only 52. But here's the tail of the tape. Uh, rushing yardage, Mass on only 89 yards, which allowed McKinley to stay in their nickel defense all day and make the quarterbacks throw into eight defenders uh, and yielded five interceptions. Maslin, uh, McKinley had 243 yards on the ground and only one turnover. Penalty-wise, about equal in yardage. Maslin with eight for 62, McKinley with 11 for 65. Uh, all the, the name of the game, though, was the interceptions and the ability uh, uh, of the McKinley Bulldogs to stay in their nickel defense, rush three and four guys, and, and force the Masson quarterbacks to throw into a crowd all day and, and create five interceptions for the yielded touchdowns. Well, 40 to eight, the Bulldogs win it, and you can see they're a happy bunch. My thanks to Dan Belfort for his job on the sidelines, to Robert Jeffries, to Ed Glass, to the folks from Mimi, to Dean Marini, our director, Jim Johnson saying thanks for watching and so long from Mossa Stadium. You've been watching 1480 WHBC's High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Downtown Ford. For price, service, and selection, come on down to Downtown Ford. By Canton Christian Fellowship, equipping families to reach the world. By CCI, your telecommunications specialist. By Stark Area RTA, come ride with us. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Subway, the fresh and healthy choice. By Tim's Tavern, famous for fish. By Video Safari, a world of adventure for the whole family. By Mercy Medical Center, we can help you get back in the game. And by Bell Stores and Sitco, when you're on the go.